Alright guys, welcome to another stream. Today uh, we have the Atari Lynx, uh, played on the Mr. FPGA. Really nice core, and uh, yeah, we're gonna actually play a variety of Lynx games tonight. So the Lynx was actually a uh, handheld game console that came out in uh, 1989. Basically the same year as like, the Game Boy and whatnot. Um, it's a beast of a uh, handheld system, uh, both... <laughs> well, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I haven't streamed here on YouTube in like a week and a half. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> but it was a beast of a handheld. Uh, it had some crazy hardware capabilities, like being able to scale and rotate and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of games also tended to have uh, really solid uh, use of colors and animation and, and all that good stuff. And uh, sat next to a Game Boy, it was like night and day. Um, unfortunately, the Lynx wasn't all that successful compared to the Game Boy. Uh, it drained batteries very, very quickly, much like the Game Gear and Turbo Express. And um, it, it it focused a lot on like arcade conversions and fast action games. Uh, it had much less uh, in terms of like role playing games and adventure games and stuff like that. Um, but that's one thing I really like about the Lynx. It is uh, a library full of games where you just kind of jump right into the action, and it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of interesting uh, conversions here, a lot of interesting uh, original software as well, and uh, we're gonna kind of bounce around, uh, you know, from game to game. Uh, some of these games I'm actually quite familiar with because I did have a, a Lynx in the late 90s, so that's when I got my first one. Um, and so there are quite a few games that I played a lot of. Shadow of the Beast here is the one I played the most. Um, yeah, Shadow of the Beast was my most played game, so we're gonna start off with this, but there are a lot of other titles that I, I did own, but barely played, or even never played, and we're gonna try some of those too. So this is gonna be kind of an interesting stream, where uh, we have some fam familiarity, as well as, uh, you know, uncharted territory for me, so. But yeah, welcome everybody to the stream, uh, hope you guys enjoy this Lynx variety stream. A lot of really cool stuff on the Lynx. I'm really kind of like stoked to uh, to show this off. The Lynx is a really good handheld system, and uh, you know if you haven't messed around with it before, uh, if you have a Mister, definitely fire it up. If you don't have a Mister, you can always go for software emulation or just kick back and relax and uh, you know uh, soak in all the uh, the games we're going to uh, play tonight. So. Uh, I got a random text on my phone, and so let's see. I see uh, Freddy's out there already. I see Office. I see Zero Yagami. Uh, welcome back. I see Jada Gamer, and uh, looks like that's all we've got so far. <laughs> Not just all we've got so far, but <laughs> this was one of those streams that was unannounced. Uh, so yeah, it might take a little while for people to, to start trickling in. Um, I literally like finished my thumbnail 20 minutes ago and had to do like the, the patron slides and stuff like that and get everything set up. <laughs> so we got the, the new patron slides and then we also have uh, the return of the cat cam. Uh, currently the kitties are eating. I just fed them so they might not be here for a little bit but when they do pop in uh, I will uh, let you guys know and I'll switch back over to the, uh, the cat cam. Double cat cam action, actually. We have two kitties here now. So I have to update my patchouli paws because I have patchouli and Milo now. Might have to turn it to like the change it to the patchy slash Milo paws. But we'll see. <laughs> Adam says, thanks for getting me in the feels the other day about the Mario 35. Dang, I missed that game. Yeah, dude, me too. I miss it so much. It's probably the game I miss the most, honestly. I, I played that game like it was a crack addiction. It was... I, I played it an unhealthy amount, but I, I haven't played a game like that in so long. That's why it, it stung so hard when they took it offline. Ugh. I've been crossing my fingers that they, they just are aiming for like some kind of physical re-release or something, but no, it hasn't happened. And it's probably not going to. It's, it's a real bummer. I, Nintendo just is... 
kind of an enigma sometimes. Like, I don't really understand some of their decisions like that. Like, I would still be playing Mario 35 if it was online. <laughs> Hopefully someone can, like, hack the Switch down the road. Uh, well, I mean, the Switch is technically already hackable, but... Get Mario 35 up and running again. That would, that would be awesome. But alright, let's go ahead and uh, start off here with Shadow of the Beast. Now, the, the Lynx, like the Game Gear, does uh, rock kind of a low resolution, so you're gonna see big, chunky pixels. And I tried to actually, uh, you know, shrink the gameplay size down just a little bit, um, to hopefully make it look a little more reasonable. But, uh, remember that the, uh, the Lynx actually used to, um... You know, when you're playing the Lynx, you're, you're playing it, like, on a screen that's about this big. So, it actually looks pretty good. But, uh, yeah, for this stream, we're going to, uh, not make it quite full screen, but not shrink it down completely either, so... So, just an FYI, when you're, when you're seeing the visuals on this, remember that it's meant to be viewed on a tiny screen, like a four-inch, <laughs> a four-inch screen or so, so... Hey, Scott, welcome back! All right, let's jump into this. So the Lynx uh, actually has uh, two two main face buttons, and what's interesting is that you can actually flip the Lynx around. It actually has two sets of the same buttons, A and B. Uh, the A and the B are reversed, like on an NES or Super NES. Kind of interesting. I know Atari did that with the uh, the Jaguar as well. It takes a little time to get used to that, but it also has option buttons. Um, there's a lot of interesting features as well. You can flip the screen around so you can rotate the unit and play it in reverse or left-handed or right-handed, however you prefer. Uh, you can also typically mute the audio, um, which is interesting as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's such a cool system. All right, let's, uh, just jump into this. So this is Shadow of the Beast, one of the many, many conversions of the game. Uh, I think, personally, this is the best home conversion, well, I, I feel like this is the best console conversion uh, from back in the day. It's got the most going on. It's got a lot of extra puzzle elements you don't have in other versions. Uh, but the first thing what we want to do here is actually, you know, get rid of this guy. We he he lights the uh, uh, he lights the wick, and then uh, when it's lit, you want to just punch it over, and it just knocks him off. All right, let me check my options. Looks like that is the option to mute music. Okay, there we go. So we got a we got a gun. We actually need that gun later, and yeah, you can actually pull up a, uh, a an item screen, uh, which you don't have in other versions. Uh, this is a very memorization heavy game, uh, so you do need to you know memorize things like these bats that fly down. I also really love the soundtrack in this version of the game. It's uh, it's really solid, as you guys will hear as we progress. Um, I did actually play a couple of Lynx games uh, a couple weeks ago on my Ninja Gaiden stream. I showed off Ninja Gaiden 1 and 3 on the Lynx. Uh, and the audio for Ninja Gaiden 3 was, like, extremely harsh, and we had a lot of people complain about that. Um, which I think gave uh, a few viewers, like, uh, a bad, um, first impression of the Lynx. But the Lynx is perfectly capable of solid audio. Now, one thing I might want to try to do here is go to my video settings, and let's try, a uh, sync core to 60 hertz. Um... I might have to turn buffer video on. I don't know. Let's see. Because I'm noticing that there's, like, a lot of screen tearing, and... I feel like... I don't know if that's, like, the links normally, or if that's just... You know, the way I'm, I'm outputting this. So, uh, we're gonna go into here, to this tree. And this is kind of our first dungeon. There's gonna be this guy that shoots a fireball at me. And then we can just do this. It's actually been a while since I've played this game, so... I'm, I'm not... I'm probably not gonna be able to beat this game. Um... But I will definitely try. Try my best. Ooh, that sucked. You actually do take fall damage. And one nice thing about this version of Shadow of the Beast is you do have some, uh, slight mid-air control, which you do not have in other versions of the game. This game, this version animates really well. Uh, I think it's got a pretty catchy soundtrack. And, uh, it generally plays pretty decently, too. Ooh, that was close. Alright. It's a really nice animation, too. 
A lot of times, like, when people ask, like, what are the best Lynx games, this is always one I, I throw in there, because it's just a pretty well-made game. You know, it plays well, it, uh, it looks good, and, uh, it animates really solid. Alright, let's drop down here. This should give me health back, yeah. I think I can actually just run straight through these. Yeah, okay. Now that gun I got in the beginning, I don't want to use that here, because I'm going to need that ammo for later on in the playthrough. Oops, did not mean to run into that guy. Okay. Now there is a, a lot of delay, like when you try to turn around, you turn around really slow, so you have to be aware of that as you're playing. That little thing on the right is a teleporter. We don't want to go through it just yet. I think we want to come over here first. Remember, this is, uh... Definitely a puzzle-oriented game. So, you have to, you know, figure out what to do. And one of the things we have to do here is... Attack this little orb. Yeah, you can actually get multiple hits on it. Hey, Aberdeen, welcome back. Zero says it looks like that fixed the tearing. Cool. Yeah, and it's it doesn't really seem like it's uh, affected my my input latency or anything like that. Not to a noticeable degree. I'm gonna fall down here. Take some damage. I think I'm gonna get some health back. But we need that key. I'm gonna kill that guy. And then I'm gonna fall down again. And the bots are out again. Yep. Got all my health back. Whoops. Yeah, you can punch these guys. Okay. Yeah, I definitely don't have the memorization aspect down like I used to. You know, it's definitely one of those games where when you memorize it, you're, you're pretty much good to go. You can beat the game like every time you play it. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, the last time I was completing this game on a regular basis was, like, uh, over 20, like, 22 years ago. Okay, so for this guy, I actually want to sit, like, right in front of him. Kind of like that. wrecked and my Milo is in here he's like trying to get on the windowsill and he's distracting me at the same time <laughs> my cat is a my new cat is a handful yeah he just jumped down okay screen transition I think this is actually a checkpoint and I probably will get some health back now you only get one life um, yeah you only get one life and, but I think this version gives you a handful of continues. So, hopefully I can not die. I love the animation in this game, it's so nice. It's very fluid. Remember, this is a, a system from 1989. You know, this would have actually worked really well as a consoleized platform. Oops. So I have to actually go to my menu, use the cog. There we go. Hey Mario, welcome back. Yeah, one more hit and I'm done. Just gotta time my punches correctly. We flip this switch. Now, I want to say when I come up here, to the right is some health, but I think there might be an enemy. Uh, let's actually do this. Oh, that was close. <laughs> that was super close. 
Alright, so I think there's a key we have to get over here, or something like that. Hey, John Smith, welcome back. And welcome back, office. Woo, that was close. Alright, just smack that. Uh, I have played the Amiga one, Aberdeen, yeah. I've never finished it, but I want to, which I actually have that on the Mr. as well. We'll probably do an Amiga stream sometime in the future. I just need to get a little more familiarized with that library before I do a stream. Alright, we're back in action. Um, trying to remember where to go. Let's go over to the left. Yeah, I think that switch actually raised up this bridge. I think that's what happened. Yeah, I guess that did something else. Oops. Did not want to take a hit. Alright, let's come on down this way. I think I have to go left first. Okay, there we go. Uh... So the fist we're gonna have to actually use on the boss, I believe. There's a boss down at the very bottom. Oh no! Did not want to do that. I hope I didn't miss anything on the right. Again. They got the jump kick, these guys. Yeah. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> Lost so much health. That's bad. Alright, let's go right, see if there's anything here. No. I'll probably take some fall damage if I go down there, so I'm gonna have to go left. Got like no health, that's not good. Oh, I slipped off, man. That's a tight jump. Yeah, you get continues. So we'll go ahead and continue, but I think oh, we're back at the checkpoint. We have to do that all over again. Hey, Mike, welcome back. Yeah, I gotta do that all over again. Alright, well, we know what to do now. I like that you can punch those things. I think in the Genesis version, you can't do that. Try this again. All right, just go left. Save the health on the right. If I really wanted to, I could probably just, uh, just kind of like tank my way through these. Boom, boom. 
Because this is going to refill my health completely anyway. Yep, there we go. Still took a hit. All right, let's come back this way. Ooh, flip that. Yeah, see, not only do you have, like, smooth animation and all that stuff, and scaling, but you even have, like, you know, layers of background scrolling and stuff like that. It's... it's really something for a handheld system back in the day. Alright, let's try this again. not fall down this time. Mike says the Lynx was impressive. Yeah, it was. So for those of you guys that have never seen the Lynx, it was a huge, huge system. Um, the Model 1, uh, super long. Uh, there's also a Model 2 that came later. It's not quite as uh, large, but it is, I think, a little bit fatter. It's a little more bulky. Uh, they're both not small systems, that's for sure. I think that was probably one of the reasons, like, it didn't do as well. It was a huge, huge thing. It wasn't really portable in the way that, like, the Game Boy was. Or even the Game Gear. I mean, the Game Gear was thinner and not quite as big either. But, it's still a great system. A lot of really, really cool software, like I mentioned. Jeez, how am I getting hit by those guys? Why am I getting hit by those guys? Uh, yeah, I just had two keys. I think there's nothing over there to the right. Man, this is like right down to the wire again. I, I definitely don't have this down like I used to. Yeah, this is our, uh, our little boss here. So I have to use that. Can I just sit here? Oh, I cannot! I... No! <laughs> no! I don't want to do that all over again. All right, we'll continue one more time. Ugh. That's brutal. In the Genesis version, they actually give you some health down there. But in this one, they don't. And you gotta do this all in one swoop. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this checkpoint, though. I really wish there was another one. Because you have to do so much when you continue. You literally have to do, like, half the level. Hey, Velcro, welcome back. No kitties yet. I think they're enjoying the sunlight in the other room. I'm gonna have to get some Milo emotes as well. I like that you can kind of use the, uh, the sound cue to know when to start running there.
Hey, Adam, welcome back. Well, with a little bit of memorization, you can always do a little bit better. So that is one thing about me having to redo this over and over, is that it helps me memorize the different sections. Hey, society, welcome back. Does the mister have a save state feature? It depends on the core. Uh, the Lynx core does support save states. So you could theoretically use that. Yeah, the save state functionality does depend on the core. Not all the cores have save states, unfortunately, but some of them do. NES is one that has save states, I believe. I don't think Genesis or Super Nintendo does, though. I could be wrong. Oh, I do not mean to slip off. And again, jeez, man. You gotta be very careful with your running and jumping. Um, actually, you know what? I have an idea. Yep. Great idea. <laughs> Oops, keep pressing the wrong button. I don't want to just fall down there and see what, what there is, but I also want to conserve my health. You know what? I think it just lets me bypass this whole section. Maybe it's worth it. Alright, we're getting close to that boss again. Ow. Right, let's go ahead and use this. take our time. Alright, looks like I can get about five hits in. Oh, that was close. Jeez, how many hits are you going to take? <laughs> there we go. I love how, like, big a lot of the uh, objects are. Is it that key? Is it that one? Okay. Woo! Alright, so we're actually coming up the well. Oh, check this out. Who's that handsome boy? Say hi to Milo. Oh, look, Patchouli's in here, too. <laughs> She's right here. <laughs> we, we've just gotten bombarded by the, by the cats. <laughs> Multi-cats. <laughs> Come on, 
She's, she's done there. She wants to come up, but she's being a little wishy-washy about it right now. Hey, Steve-O. I do have an audience. <laughs> uh, trust me, they've been a handful. It's just having two animals now is like... It's keeping me on my toes. Actually, move my patchy paws sign down to here. Oh, you know what? I totally uh, forgot to change my thumbnail. Let me actually do that. There we go. <laughs> I wish I caught that sooner. I knew I was missing something. All right. So basically, what happens is when you start Shadow of the Beast, uh, you know you want to. Get rid of this guy, get his gun, then you want to go straight left, and you go through that first dungeon we just completed, then you pop back out, uh, outside the well. Now you have to run all the way across these plains to the right. And there are gonna be some health refills, I think. I know there are in other versions. Yeah, right here. Ooh, that hurt. So I've got a ball here, and I'm assuming I have to, like, drop it in a hole or something. It's been a long time since I've, I've even gotten this far. Oh, I took a hit. Ah! Damn spikes. Man, it's been so long, I don't even remember these enemies. It's one of those games I had wanted to get better at, to potentially do like a... You know, like a Let's Play or a Quick Play. I don't know if it's gonna happen anytime soon. It's been on my, my docket for a long time. But I just haven't put the time into it to get better at it again. I used to have a uh, Lynx emulator on my original Xbox when I had a modded Xbox. And so I was playing Lynx games on that for a little bit, but it's much better to play them on the Mister now. Hmm. I turned backwards, which was a mistake. You don't want to do that. The enemies are nearby, and if you feel like you need to really just move, then you should probably just jump and use that mid-air control. Don't turn around, because... You know, it's like, it takes several frames to turn around. So I think I'm supposed to punch that. Yeah. It gets rid of all those insects. A lot of creepy enemies in the Shadow of the Beast universe. It's one of the things I've always enjoyed about it. Lots of ominous traps as well, like <laughs> these big ass spikes coming out of the ground. It's creepy. It's definitely a foreboding uh, atmosphere. That's one of the big things I've always loved about Shadow of the Beast. Alright, so... Hmm, no torch. Yeah, look at that scaling. So nice. Uh...
Yeah, so in other versions you need the torch, and it's just right outside the castle, but it's not outside this castle. I'm a little confused. I must have missed... Huh. Unless it's inside the castle, but I ha highly doubt it. I don't think there's a torch in here. See, now I'm kind of annoyed because I don't remember ever missing the torch. Um. <laughs> All right, I gotta look this up. Where's the freaking torch in Link: Shadow of the Beast? All right, I'm totally looking up a uh, a playthrough of this. The torch must have been in that first dungeon, and I missed it. Because he doesn't pick it up outside the castle like in the Genesis version. How did I miss it? Oh no, they, they totally programmed it in society. It's I think it was in the first dungeon. It is in the first dungeon. I completely missed it. Where the hell is it? I, I, there's a place I just must have completely missed. I'm trying to go back and forth and see uh, where it is. The dragon I found out on the uh, the first dungeon, the green one that like spews fire out that you have to wait to get a key. You can apparently like walk into him. I I still don't know where he got the torch. <laughs> And the enemies that crawl on the ceiling, he just kicks them. What the hell? Why does he have to... <sighs> I don't know where he got the freaking torch. Like, I'm skipping through the video, and it's... I must be skipping the part where he actually grabs it. <sighs> Alright, whatever. Well, we basically can't... We basically can't beat the game at this point, which is a bummer. So, we'll go ahead and uh, switch games. But yeah, still a really cool game. It's, you know, like I said, memorization heavy. Um, but it is... It's worth it. Jesus, man. These channels. It, it, it's always, like, disheartening when I go to pull up a random long play and the channel's got, like, 55,000 subscribers. I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I doing wrong? All right.
Oh, it looks like we actually have a glitch. It's totally glitched out. All right. Yeah, the kitties are pretty chill right now. All right. Hey, hey, Atrocity and Gedrin. Welcome back, guys. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to do some repeat content. We're going to play another game that uh, a lot of people like on the Lynx. And I like on the Lynx. And that is the uh, Lynx version of Ninja Gaiden. We did this a couple weeks ago, but we'll go ahead and just do it again. Because it is cool. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, this is a port of the arcade Ninja Gaiden. Toki. Yeah, I'll have to do that too, Mike. So you can actually throw enemies in this. Have to remember how to do it. There we go. Alright, I think the, uh... Oh, come on, enemy. Really? Seriously? Uh, let's turn off the sinking. Yeah, I noticed that it was screwing with the audio. Let's go ahead and reset and just start again. Uh, Freddy, yeah, I mean, it had a uh, more modern emulated conversions, like to the Wii Virtual Console, uh, and there's an arcade archive of it on modern systems. Uh, it also got an MS-DOS port, and it's terrible, don't play it. <laughs> um... So that little item there is health. And we're gonna get wrecked here. We got wrecked uh, a couple weeks ago when we played this. But uh, the idea is to try to uh, launch enemies into objects. That's how you get power-ups and stuff like that. You can also use uh, your option button for this. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually curious if it was converted to other platforms that I don't know about, like the Amiga or the Atari ST or something like that. I am curious to know. I'm trying to throw these guys, but it's not working. That item is just points, I think. Nothing special. Let's jump up here. Alright, I want to throw these guys into that phone booth, preferably. Whoa, that's not what I was trying to do. gonna give me some health back. I definitely want that. Let's try to toss guys into this table. And let's try to throw them into this. This barrel? Whatever this is. That works. Extra life. Nice. Oh, looks like that was a health refill, sort of. Unfortunately, I don't have my sword. The sword is uh, the most powerful weapon in the game. 
It is a temporary power-up, though, unfortunately. Ow. I think I'm dead. Yep. Society says the torch was right after you put the gear in the machine to ride the platform up. Really? That's ex How did I miss it? Feels like that's something that's like impossible to miss. And yet I did. Multiple times. Just throw him off the ledge. <laughs> Remember these guys getting pretty brutal as the game went on. <laughs> Top Gun. Speaking of which, I saw the sequel uh, last week. I enjoyed it, actually. I wasn't expecting to, but it was, it was decent. Should be the boss. I don't think use that backflip to my advantage. You just run up against a wall and you backflip. go. That's some health. If I can get it. Okay, got it. There we go. Ooh, swords. Finally. Is he getting back up? Nope. They are dead. Tough game. Lower expectations had it happened with Sonic. Yeah, the same here. I uh, watched Sonic, I think, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. And I was actually like, oh, this was, that was a fun movie. <laughs> Are they just gonna fall off? Nope. You just despawn them. That's cool. I like that. Hmm. Let's jump over here. Okay. Some time. Don't really need time. Jeez, man. It's rough. I, I really don't like how inconsistent the throwing is, though. Like, it's really weird. But it's it's such an important move. But like that just I didn't even grab the guy that time. I didn't grab them. It's like the the position you have to be in to throw is just really awkward. It's like you have to be right on top of them, but that's not what the animation uh you know is is dictating or or conveying. Yeah, like, 
I was right on top of him. That's so weird. Speaking of movies, uh, Atrocity watched RoboCop for the first time. Oh, man. Dude, the original RoboCop is one of my all-time favorites. I love that movie so much. Yeah, the other thing is, like, there are so many enemies on screen. The Lynx was really good with that. Extra life. Special life, wow. Good timing. Maybe that's one of the tricks, is to punch them a couple times and then throw. It'd also be nice if, like, this fire actually hurt the enemies. Oops! No! Yeah, I mean, yeah, atrocity. Like the uh, everything is done in camera in that movie, except for obviously the stop animation or stop motion for the uh, what the hell is it called? I forgot its name. Um, but yeah, they use like you know squibs and everything, and there's so many of them. Everything is just so bloody in that. It's it's great. It's visceral, you know? And it's generally got a good story and, you know, good action and whatnot. It flows really well. See, these guys you pretty much have to throw. Oh, come on. If you punch them, they go ballistic. They just bounce all over the place. Ugh. See, like that. Come on! Gameplay and suck! <laughs> That's what I should change my channel name to. I'm not playing very well tonight. <laughs> Extra life. Have to get it though. There we go. We got it. Oh, 
Hey, gotcha. Welcome back. Wow, my sword wore off already. Jeez. Mm. That's not good. Hey, hey, I'll take that. Oh, geez, so many enemies. <laughs> Thank God you get invincibility frames when you get knocked down. Otherwise, there'd be no way in hell I'd get through these guys. Yeah, these guys are taking more than one hit now. In the first level, they just die instantly. Not anymore. Yeah, th throwing the log guy seems to be mandatory. They have such long range. It's like you just can't get in close and just punch them. Now, it seems like you can punch them as they wake up, at least. Too many guys. And I I don't I don't have the advantage at all with my attacks. Their attacks are all, you know, longer than mine. Yeah, I'm dead. Ugh. Just getting beat down here. Boss time. And they just jump out of the picture. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, another extra life. I'll take it. I'm gonna need it. Alright, Mike. I'll be here. Yeah, these guys seem like they've got some decent priority on wake up. I wonder 
remember if we made it this far last time we played. I think we did. But I think we had to continue. Don't need time. Ah, oh, just points. I was hoping that would be health. Yeah, this is actually one of the really cool things about the Lynx, is that it could toss around a lot of objects without slowing down. Like I said, it's really impressive hardware for 1989 and a handheld configuration. Another extra life. I do wish the enemies would, uh, you know, despawn a little bit faster. Just kind of like slows things down. I'm wondering where it's going to uh, put me when I get a game over. All the way back at the beginning. God damn it. I had a feeling. That's good. Come on, man. Get it. What the freaking hell? God, I hate it when, like, you have iframes. You won't actually pick up items. I just got completely robbed there. I was about to drop a massive F-bomb there, and I caught myself. Now, that really pissed me off. I'm sitting, like, right on top of the object, and it's not picking it up. It would have refilled my health completely. Yeah, this game, it's, it's a challenging game. It's very challenging. And believe it or not, the arcade version is actually a lot harder.
All right, let's try this again. Oh, still took a hit. Yeah, Atrocity, I think I've had that happen in that version of Raiden as well. That's definitely aggravating. Yeah, because you expect that when you drop a bomb, it's just going to absorb any projectile on the screen. But sometimes it doesn't work 100%. And what's really annoying here is that, like, the throw isn't working half the time. It's just... it's not... it's, it's kind of poorly implemented, in my opinion. The throat does work a lot better in the arcade game. Alright, so we're not going to continue after this, because we're going to have to do the whole level over again, and it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Extra life. God, seriously, dude? This is just so cheap. Unbelievably cheap. Thank you. Hold on a second, guys. Bots are really pissing me off, man. Like, the bot problem is, like, really making streaming on YouTube not very fun. It's like, I'm starting to actually hate it. And that's not how it should be. I should be having a good time here, but these bots just keep coming. Uh, Arthur, I have just about every Lynx game here, so... We might play Gates of Xenicon later, we'll see. Uh, Society, yeah, I have made it farther this time around, but we're not gonna make it much farther, because I don't... I don't have any lives left. I'm definitely not continuing, I'm not doing this level over again. Wow, didn't even hit that, come on. Holy crap, did he just do three blocks of health? You know what? Screw this game. This game is just dumb right now. <laughs> I'm in a salty mood because of these stupid bots. Ugh. 
All right, let's see. Let's try to play something else that's not gonna completely annoy me. Let's actually uh, take a step back and do something a little bit. Well, I'm gonna say easier, but for all I know, we're gonna get wrecked here too. But we'll see. I just, I just like blasted YouTube on Twitter. I tried to tag as many YouTube accounts as I could. Yeah, this is uh, Rygar, which is a uh, port of an arcade game as well. It's not the NES Rygar, it's the actual, you know, it's a port of the arcade Rygar. Yeah, middle tier Milo, yeah. He likes the middle tier. This is, I think, a very early Lynx game, too. But it's a really fun game. It's not too difficult. I think... No, I can't do it. I think I just attack straight forward right now. I thought you could, like, swing it over your head. But yeah, you do need to keep moving. You've got a... Short time time meter. Yeah, we'll see how far I get in this. I think you can actually jump on enemies too. Yeah. You can get powered up. Yeah, I remember when I, I rediscovered the links and in my early days of YouTube, I was playing a lot of Lynx on my, my own again. And uh, I played Rygar for the first time, and I was like, hey, this is actually really fun. It wasn't too challenging. I remember being able to beat it uh, pretty early on. Like, I might have even finished it like on my first try. Hey, Lawrence, welcome back. Arthur says, I remember having the system. It was a nightmare to use. It needs, like, 10 AA batteries. It does need a lot of batteries, but, you know, whenever I played the Lynx, I always, just like the Game Gear, I had it plugged up into a wall. I never used batteries on it. It's not entirely true. When I first got a Lynx, I didn't have an AC adapter. Uh, and I remember my parents took me on a, you know... We went to a family campground, and they would always let me bring my handheld systems. And so naturally I brought the Lynx, but because I didn't have the AC adapter, you know, we had to buy a bunch of batteries, and they didn't last very long, you know. Just like a couple hours, if that. Uh, you know, on one fresh set of batteries. Yeah, if anyone actually wants to play the Lynx on real hardware, get an AC adapter. Make sure you're using that, plugged up to a wall. It's kind of nice you can sort of control uh, your attack, at least in the power ups, the powered up state right now. All right, that's it. Yeah, society. Yep, there is a Lynx Rygar. Absolutely. Yeah, and NES Rygar Society is one I want to try to learn. Do like a live stream of it or something. I've never actually really gotten anywhere in that version. Because NES Rygar is more of like an action adventure game. You have to, you know, it's kind of open world. And there's like lots of backtracking and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember, uh, being forced downwards when I attack in the air, so you, you don't want to attack over a pit. Otherwise, you'll end up just falling into the pit. That's one major thing you've got to watch out for in this game. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's some tricky enemy placement too, that they, they want you to try to attack over a pit and fall to your death. But as you can see, I'm kind of doing like a Mega Man 3 thing here, where like I push the screen over as far as I can to, to trigger the enemies. And that makes my life a lot easier. I almost feel like you die in one hit in this game. I don't remember, I'm pretty sure you do. So you need to be really careful. I agree, Arthur. The Lynx is definitely underrated. It's It's got a really solid library. And the, uh, the hardware set makes for, you know, stuff that holds up really well, I think. With, you know, your smooth animation and your, uh... You know, your scaling and rotation and stuff like that. He took a lot of hits. Look at that, multiple layers of scrolling. I love it. Looks like I just got some time back. Yeah, the great thing about things like the Mister is that it opens people up to platforms like this that they may not have experienced back in the day. More time. So hopefully the Lynx will start getting a little more recognition that it, it deserves. What I really like about the Lynx is it definitely feels uh, closer to the 16-bit consoles of the era than it does the... Uh, it's contemporary 8-bit handhelds, like the Game Boy and Game Gear. I'm actually really surprised Atari never went with, like, a consoleized Lynx. It would have been a pretty good idea. You know, instead of dicking around with the 7800 or even developing the Jaguar, just like, <laughs> they should have just put out a consoleized Lynx. That would have been pretty cool. It's actually, now that I think about it, it's really surprising. Like, they could have ditched the 7800 right away and just made a consoleized Lynx. It would have been a big, big step up compared to poor old 7800. The pitiful 7800. Okay, it doesn't look like I can actually... Okay, I can. I think you can actually swing back and forth, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I, li I like the 7800, but man, it was kind of like, why even bother with the other consoles on the market? Links, uh, consoleized links would have been so much cooler. Uh, Arthur, those icons are power ups. One of them, I think, uh, you know, expands my attack. I'm not sure what the other one does. I don't remember how many levels are in this, either. I don't remember if it's like 12 or 15, or even maybe like 20. It does end. I like the background variety, too. It's, it's solid. Star does. There are a lot of power-ups in this that I just don't know what they do. And you got 46 seconds. Okay. 
All right, we gotta we gotta book it. In less than twenty seconds. Okay, we're good. Yeah, society. Yep, there was the Turbo Express. I, I tend to forget about the Turbo Express as well, because it was definitely, I think, the least popular of the handheld consoles back then. It was basically like Game Boy, then Game Gear, then Lynx, and then Turbo Express, like nobody knew about. <laughs> but still, Turbo Express was really cool. I, I wouldn't mind having one. And hey, Leo, welcome back. Adam is back! The wife doesn't know how to let you relax. <laughs> okay, that was kind of close. Yeah, we're playing Rygar right now for anybody that wasn't here earlier. It's a fairly popular Lynx game, actually. Lynx fans usually put it near the top of their, their list. Just it's a simple, fun game. Oh! He was coming up from below. I thought that, uh... I thought that my character was just gonna, like, kind of, like, hop on him, but... I guess it doesn't work if you're just standing on the ground. It does if you're actually jumping. Okay, this is not good. Oh, it happened again. Leo says there's a Turbo Express filter on the Turbo Graphics Mini. I didn't even know that. <laughs> well, that was rough. I died twice. Yeah, definitely a slight difficulty spike. Yeah, the controls are, 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 they are solid, Adam. And I do have a VR headset, yeah. Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to add screenshot to my... I'm just going to leave my tweet up and keep commenting on it. And basically show YouTube, like, listen, this bot problem is... It's a legit problem. It's like, fix it, man. Alright, there we go. Okay. Yep, that's the weapon upgrade. That's what I figured. Sun is the weapon upgrade. Oh! Should have attacked the guy behind me. Jeez, man. These guys are catching me off guard like crazy. I mean, I guess that's the point. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? I should be jumping. I should be jumping on top of these guys. I don't know what that tiger does. It's like a tiger face. Arthur asks, Rygar has some bosses? Uh, I don't believe it does. I don't think there are any bosses in this game. Uh, yes, this was an arcade game. Yes.
I like the, uh, the usage of colors in this. You have a lot of varied backdrop backdrops. Like, now it's blue. Oh, that's not- that's a problem. I think I was supposed to actually jump on that guy. Okay, no. It's just that jump did it look like it was doable. Same with this one. Oh, that's a tight jump. Wow. I'm half expecting something to happen here, but so far in these rope sections, nothing's really happened. I'm guessing I'm on level 9 right now. I think that's what that 9 is for. You get some good points for uh, time. close. You can actually kill the fireballs? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> we just learned something. It is nice you can get some extra lives. Got some extra time. Fat Bobby, yeah, that is a game on the links. I've never actually played that before. I can't remember if that was one of those telegames releases. The links, like the Jaguar, got a bunch of like late release releases from telegames, including the uh, links version of Ride In, which we will definitely play later. One of the interesting things about the links is that you can actually rotate at 90 degrees, and some games actually play vertically. Uh, Ride In is one of them, as well as uh, Clax. Which we will- we'll play some clacks later, too. That's a fun game. It's very much a- Lynx is very much like an arcade-heavy system. I think Gauntlet 3 is actually another one that plays vertically. Despite dying a bunch of times, this has still been much more peaceful than uh, Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> Big boy. Will I play Batman Returns on the Lynx? I don't know. I might. I might not. That was a pretty popular game on the Lynx, too. I think it came bundled with certain console bundles or system bundles. If you showed up at school with the Lynx, you would have been seen as a rich kid. <laughs> Yeah, I think the Lynx was the most expensive of the handhelds. Um, I 
Yeah, it had the most advanced hardware, so the, the price difference kind of made sense. Like I mentioned earlier, I still feel like they should have done a consoleized version of it. Actually would have cut down on the cost, and it would have given people multiple ways to play their Lynx carts. Yep, just gotta jump. Jesus, guys. These things scare me, actually. They just pop up out of nowhere. And they make, like, a kind of a creepy sound, too. Nice, another extra life. Oh, well, that was close. Man, I can even hop on those guys. That's nice. Woo! Making progress. <laughs> Adam had tiger handhelds. I mean, I think we all had tiger handhelds. Society says, three million links is sold. Yeah, I mean, it did way better than, like, the Jaguar. Hell, three million might even be more than the 7800, for all I know. So it's not like the Lynx bombed on the market. It was definitely Atari's most successful <laughs> thing in a while. But they definitely could have, uh... Could have done more with it, like I said, like a consoleized version. Almost at a million points! I had thought about doing a Tiger Showcase. I think you can actually emulate them online. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of Tiger handheld games, but I did have a few. I had a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. It was, uh... And then I had uh, Mega Man 2. I really liked Mega Man 2 growing up. Um... God, I feel like I might have had one of the Double Dragon ones. Uh, I don't think I had Castlevania 2. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't- I don't remember having a lot of them. Atrocity says, did anyone have the Tiger Light Gun games? Those things are pretty special. Yeah, no, I've never even seen those. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm overpowered. You gotta remember, you die in one hit. So, it's, you know, it kind of balances out. Yeah, we had a stage earlier where I died like two or three times back to back. You know, if you're not careful, uh, you can still get wrecked really fast. And when you die, you lose all your power-ups. Ooh, we've got all four power-ups now. Not sure what that power-up did. 
Oh, I can attack vertically now. Okay. Nice. Check that out. Sweet. More time. Nice. Hey, Scruff. Scruff says, is NES Rygar the best Rygar? Even better than the PS2 Rygar? Yes, he thinks so. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't know. I haven't ever... I haven't really played much of NES Rygar. I do like this one a lot, though. Uh, Arthur, I cannot charge my attack. No. See what happens here. Is anything gonna happen? Nope. Anything gonna happen here? Nope. Okay, interesting. Cool. Adam says, I really like those quick plays, quick plays, by the way. You definitely seem like you're having a blast, especially the Mario one. That's always fun to go back to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying the quick plays. I, I do want to knock out some other, like, full, you know, full-on Let's Plays. But, uh... I've had a, a few things going on. I've had a couple of interest changes as well. Like, I started getting back into, like, music and rhythm games. Uh, so that's been taking up a lot of my life these last two weeks, and then I had to re-up some of my IT certifications uh, These past two weeks That was due on Friday, so That also took up a bunch of my time The quick plays are fun, but you know I tried getting away from that style of video for a while because it was just kind of like kind of lazy content But my uh you know, fully edited Let's Plays, they don't get a lot of views, and so it's also kind of like... Uh, hard to find the motivation to do them. Well, that was close. But at least the Quick Plays allow for some, like, weekly content that's not live streams. And if you guys enjoy them, that's cool. Yeah, these guys just pop up out of nowhere, and they can just annihilate you really fast. Whew. Definitely getting trickier. There's gotta be like 20 levels. I think we're getting close to the end of the game. Leo says he watched and enjoyed my Mario 1 Let's Play. Very nice. Trusty says they made tire games for Area 51 and Virtua Cop and included a little fold-out light gun. They're really awful. Detect hits using four LEDs in the corners. So were those actually like handhelds atrocity or were they like something you hooked up to your TV? I assume they're just handhelds. I'll have to, I'll have to check out YouTube videos of those. Oh no. I lost all my power-ups. Now well, things are going to get a little more difficult. nice if they uh, had more music in this. 
I will say that. Tiger does. By the way, if you guys don't mind seeing all the bot spam, this is the tweet. Please uh, retweet it. Yeah, do me a favor and retweet it. I'd like the, it to spread around a little bit if possible, because, you know, these bots are really tiresome. And it's not just me, like, there's, there's probably, like, you know, parents out there watching with their kids, and, like, these porn bots show up, and I highly doubt that's what they want their kids to be seeing. YouTube's always had a, a bit of a bot problem, but not this bad, and not this vulgar, either. I guess I could just hop on that guy. But I like attacking these enemies. I like killing them, I like getting the points. That's actually interesting, every hit gives me points. It's not every day you see a uh, action game that does that. It's common for shoot 'em ups, believe it or not. But not action games like this. Am I excited for Shredder's Revenge? Actually, yeah, I am. It looks really awesome. I'm just... I want to know what it's going to cost, though. I, don't, I haven't found a price anywhere yet. And it's coming out, I think, next week? Or this week? Oh, that ha it happened again. That happened earlier. I had a feeling that was going to happen. You might be seeing a game over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Yeah, talk about a difficulty spike. Woo! Multiple upgrades, that's good. Alright, is anything going to happen here? Anything. It's so weird, why do they even let you attack here? Scruffs is $25 digital, $35 physical. Oh, that's not too bad. Maybe I'll see if I can buy a physical then. How does the Game Gear compare against the Lynx? The Lynx is definitely a step above, uh, technology-wise. It has, like, built-in hardware scaling and stuff like that. Uh, and I think it's a more powerful system overall. like another extra life. Thank you. 
See what happens. Atrocity says the physical is limited run. Ah, oh, that sucks. I mean, it's possible there might be a retail run. We'll see. I mean, it's turtles. I could see them getting it into like Best Buy or something. He's we're at level 21 right now. How many stages are in this game? Does anybody want to quickly look up how many levels are in here? We've got to be close to the end. I know the game ends. Lawrence is 23. Arthur's is 27. I'm a little confused. Which one is it, guys? <laughs> uh, society, yeah, the 21 is the level number. Yep. Yeah, Atrocity, the thing about Limited Run as well is that, like, you know, in a lot of cases, like, you have to pre-order the game, and then it's not even ready for, for months. And that's frustrating. Like, I'd like to just buy a physical at retail, uh, and just have it day one. But, I mean, if it's ready for day one at retail, and it's like 35 bucks or whatever, then I'll, I'll go buy it physical. But the whole limited run pre-order model is just... it's... I, I've... I bought multiple, several games from Limited Run, probably five or six titles now, and it's just, it's always a hassle. I prefer when they do, re like, releases with Best Buy. Like, I got Doom 64 at Best Buy, I just walked up and bought it one day. It's nice. Uh, same with, like, uh, I think East Origin. For the, the Switch, I got that at Best Buy. You know, no pre-order nonsense, no waiting for months and months. Really use an extra life! Leo says the rear of the box is 23 levels. Arthur searched Google and it told him 27. This is looking like a last level to me. Is anything gonna happen? I mean, I'm okay with this. <laughs> Hold right and win. Thank <laughs> you. 
But I guess there is a boss. Could you stop doing that, please? Oh! Seriously? I have to smack him in the head? I'm running out of time. Whoa! Holy shit! <laughs> I did not see that coming. Holy crap. <laughs> That's what happens when you run. That's a creative way to implement a uh, timeout. <laughs> no continues. Oh, man. That's that's crazy. Wow, no continues. Well, we got really close to beating the game. <laughs> oh, man. Check on the kitties. It's been a little while. I guess, uh, let me actually move this back up since Milo's down there on the bottom. Yeah, we were very close. I didn't realize until it was too late that I had to uh, hit him in the head. I kept hitting him on, in his feet because um, it kept giving me points. I was like, oh, well, if it's giving me points, I must be doing damage. They're sleeping off their dinner. <laughs> All right. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show off the uh, the vertical orientation. Uh, what's the name of the cats? The one on the left is Patchouli. The one on the right is Milo. Yep, Atrocity Milo is male. Yep. So what we're going to do is actually go to our video settings and we switch it to vertical. Doesn't seem to want to work. Uh. Hmm. This is odd. This is frustrating. 
Like, it's giving me audio, but it's not, uh... I might have to power cycle the mister. Ugh. Vertical. Let's do a cold reboot. <sighs> Thanks for the GG, Scott. Leo says, I'm surprised Miss Pac-Man didn't get uh, top day support. Yeah, that is uh, interesting that they, they didn't go for that. All right. Uh, so uh, Lynx is actually under the console cores, even though it's not really a console. It's a handheld. But some people do call the handheld system game consoles still. Uh, so... Uh, this was apparently under the prototype section. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, what happened is like a prototype of this was discovered and then it was just released by Telegames. But I think it was still basically like a fully functional game. Uh, there we go. Yeah, sometimes unfortunately you have to... Uh, you know, sound's going to dip out here for a second. Sometimes you uh, you have to reset your your whole mister, unfortunately. But it is what it is. All right. Now there's no in-game music, but it's still a pretty fun game. And one thing I like is that you can fire really fast. This one does slow down quite a bit, though. kind of a bummer there's no music. I'd be really curious to hear the original write-in themes. <laughs> That's a meek list. Wow. I'd be interested to hear the original write-in themes on the links. My spread shot's not getting very spready. Lots of slowdown, too. Yeah, so how you would play this on an actual link is you would rotate your console 90 degrees. Is that power up? I think the power up just completely went off the screen. That's a bummer. Wow, the laser is still a spread shot? Like, why would you just use the spread shot then? I mean, <laughs> like the Super Nintendo one, you can destroy the boss before it even appears. That's great. Is that an extra life? Oh no, that's just like a downed plane. Interesting. It's a, kind of a fun version. It's interesting. Do I like this game? Yes, I like. Whoa, I lost my, uh, my firepower. That's interesting. That definitely makes things a little bit harder. Leo says it sounds like it's supposed to have music, but it doesn't. Wait, 
where are you reading that from, Leo? Because this version definitely does not have music. <laughs> I've just tried the uh, various option keys to turn on or turn off music. Can you try to pull up like a long play or something and see if it has music anywhere? The old Atari HQ site? Unless I, I have a different version, like in a different folder. The Meeklis in this doesn't even look anything like a Meeklis. It's the Meeklis is uh, the little blue dino you can uncover in the writing games. It's like a series staple. All the way back to the very first game. something. Uh, Atrocity, I thought there was, like, a, a, a weird, like, paper manual that came with the, uh, Telegames version. And I don't remember if this is correct. It's been a long time since I've owned write-in on the links. I, I thought it came in, like, a jewel case or something, too. It was, like, very unofficial packaging. Right, it might have even been their last Lynx release. Ow. Oh. Any last life? Whoa there. <laughs> that bomb didn't do anything. What the hell? I wanted to blow up the power up canister. Leo says Atari HQ doesn't know what they're talking about. No sign of music on real hardware. Interesting. So it's not just us. It's their, uh... Maybe they had, like, a different prototype that actually had music, but... It's Atari HQ. I mean, they had a lot of prototypes and stuff, too. Maybe they have some other version that was never leaked. 
And the game is still pretty fun as is, but having music definitely would would help. in here <laughs> the lack of music is just like you stop firing and just all sound ceases to to be all sound ceases to exist <laughs> this downgrade uh really makes the game a lot more difficult am i flying in the space already what we're in space already interesting Game over. Let's not continue. Uh, what I will do is actually switch over to uh, another Vertical Links title. I had mentioned Clax earlier, so we'll go ahead and uh, and play that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, nothing with, uh, I don't see any other versions of writing on here, so it's odd. All right. There's always time for clacks. Yeah, <laughs> look at them spoiled cats, right? Yeah, so this is Clax. It's a fun puzzle game. This was an arcade game. An Atari Games arcade game, actually. And funny enough, Atari Games was actually separate, a different company than uh, Atari Corp who managed like the 1700, Atari ST, uh, Atari Lynx. But Atari Games, under Tengen, which was their home label, ported a bunch of their games to the Lynx. It's really cool. Uh, we will leave it on easy, because Clax is a hard game. And the idea is to drop blocks down and in uh, match three. How many games are for the Lynx? Uh, I don't know. Arthur, there's there's quite a few, and there's probably close to a hundred, I would imagine. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. And uh, you can actually speed it up by pressing down. You can also grab a handful at once. Do 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 do. And again, just like writing, you would rotate your link screen. <laughs> the clapping is great. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Clack wave. Mike has never played Clax. Well, there's always time for Clax, Mike. You should play Clax. Nice.
noise. I love the sound effects on clacks. They're especially squishy in the Lynx one for some reason. Nice. Adam says, what's my favorite version of Tetris? Uh... Whew. I'm gonna have to name three. Uh, the original Game Boy version. Uh, the original NES version. And then, uh, the next Tetris on Nintendo 64. Yeah, they basically want me to do diagonals. Do-do-do-do! It, Clax is just a chill game. It's one, it's one thing I like about it. It's just very chill. There we go. Atrocity says, I remember trying to get the X-Warp in this game. It's really tough. Yeah, what's the X-Warp? Mike says, I like Tetris effect when I'm intoxicated. <laughs> Doesn't seem like I have any particular goals here on this one. Actually, not good. Can I go one step higher? Let's see. Okay, good. I can. Awesome. I was half expecting to get those orange ones, but that's not happening. Uh, Scruff, no, the new Tetris is in Nintendo 64. The CDI one is literally just called Tetris. And that is the one you're thinking of, but it's not... It's not really a good version of Tetris. Mm, yeah. Visually and sound-wise, it's pleasing. But it doesn't play very well at all, which kind of kills Tetris! Tetris has to play well. Uh, this could be a problem. Yeah, like, it, it, it has so much input lag if you use a, a gamepad, and then it's way too twitchy when you're using, like, a mouse or a trackball. It's just... Uh, don't even get me started on CDI, man. <laughs> don't even get me started. I have a soft spot for the platform, but man, there's so much laziness on that platform, it's unbelievable. Okay, this is a big problem. Because <laughs> whoa! Yeah, you can only just drop, like, or I should say, dump so many blocks. Yeah, Mike, New Tetris is uh, it's really fun. Uh, what I love about New Tetris is that it's really responsive. It was one of the earlier Tetrises where you could store a, a, a piece. And then uh, it also has this new mechanic called the power blocks, where if you make like a perfect square, uh, it'll turn into what's called a power block. And um, those are extremely helpful. And I think there are certain modes where it like multiplies scoring too. It's really fun. So the Trocity says on a certain level, he thinks it's level 11, if you make a full X on the board, uh, stretching to all corners, you warp halfway through the game. Wow. 
Yeah, that sounds like it would be tricky. You'd have to line up your uh, your pieces perfectly. Clack wave. You must get ten claxes. Hmm, what is that? Oh, yeah, I, I had a feeling it would just... Just act as like a wild card. Which is nice. Brian says, I remember Clax, I think, on the NES. Yes, there is an NES Clax. They're giving me so many different colors now that it's, uh... It's getting tricky to keep track of these things and... Drop them in positions where they need to be. Ooh, that was bad. Oh, I think it's game over. We'll go ahead and continue. Clack wave. Uh, most of us here, Brian, are that old. <laughs> I mean, we're a retro gaming channel that focuses mostly on NES era and whatever. Most, m many of us grew up during that era, so... We're all that old. The sound effects are so pleasing in this game. And actually, the, the sound samples in the Lynx version are pretty good. I actually want to try to complete this first. Oh, I screwed it up. Why did I do that? Ugh, did not mean to do that. Oh, I can't drop him down. Oh, we're going to get a game over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, one more continue. Hey, Fusion, welcome back. What was everybody doing in 1991? I was playing NES and uh, probably Game Gear Clack later that year. Hey, 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 Kevin, Buffalo Pinball. What's going on, dude? Kevin uh, is a big uh, Atari fan. Fellow Jag, uh, fellow Jag fan as well. <laughs> I'm sure he's rocked out plenty of Atari Lynx. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Yeah, well, this is not looking good again. Mike says he was playing the Atari 7800 and the Master System. Interesting. Do 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 do. Hmm, it's not good. All right, there we go. That's better. Oh, okay, this actually works out. Do 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 do. Let's see if we can get ourselves a couple of yellow pieces. Ooh, actually I need purple too. 
Hmm. Nice, there we go. Looking a little bit better. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, we got it. Woo. Mike says you got his Genesis November 91. Nice. Yeah, I didn't get into the 16-bit market until Christmas 93, and I got the uh, Super Nintendo. You can also toss tiles you're holding back up onto the conveyor? Really? I didn't know that. It's like you can toss them backwards. Do they just go back up the screen? How does that work? Oops, did I mean to do that? Got a lot of points for that. Scruff says, uh, do you have a favorite retro gaming era? For him, it's everything from NES to N64. Yeah, for me, it's pretty much the entirety of the 1990s. There was such a huge uh, leap in um, technology that, you know, it's it was a leap that we'll probably never see again. Woo! So yeah, definitely the 90s. I mean, you had the NES all the way up to the Dreamcast. So, yeah. Diagonals give pretty good points. Oh! <laughs> Alright, well that's enough clacks. Clacks is a- it's a fun game. Look at that scaling and rotation. It's so nice! It's a handheld system from 1989! Oh, you hold up to do it. Okay, yeah, I pressed the other button and it just dropped my piece. Let's actually, uh, test that real quick. Clack. Oh, interesting. That's pretty useful. <laughs> well, you just, uh, you just taught me something. That's really cool. Whoa! <laughs> the sound effects are the best in this game. <laughs> if someone had to ask, like, what game has the best sound effects, it's gotta be Clax.
If anyone wants to hear about my bot woes, please feel free to re retweet. Yeah, for anybody that missed them, there's Milo down below. He likes the second tier for some reason. Or the middle tier. Alright, let's try uh, another vertical game. This is uh, Gauntlet 3. And I've never been very good at this one. I never played it very much. Or very long. Apparently this is a uh, pretty early Lynx game, too. Right, let's try it out. You have a ton of different characters to choose from. Let's go with the Valkyrie. Yes, I've barely played this one before. So we'll just kind of roll with it, see what happens. Yeah, the Gauntlet games were top-down arcade games. I don't know if uh, Gauntlet 3 was like an arcade game. Does anybody know? Definitely on the brutal side of things. Looks like I have... Doesn't tell me how many keys I have. I know I have none. Interesting, you can't actually turn the music off on this one. This might even be one of those games where you can, like, link up Lynxes and play in two-player... two-player mode? I don't know, 100%, but the Lynx could do that, like the Game Boy and the Game Gear. You know, it's interesting, I haven't seen any spawners yet. That's a gauntlet stable. It's being able to, uh... Oh, it's still on patchy cam! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoops! My bad. Party foul. It's okay, you didn't really miss much. What you're seeing here, that's all I've done so far in this level. There's a computer. Oh, I can actually use, uh, these. Huh, interesting. I have no idea how to use these. Yeah, I have no idea. Scruff says, aren't there Lynx collections on the Evercade? I believe there are, yes. Brian says, how long have I had that Bowser plush? Uh, since Christmas. So, December last year. Uh, it was actually made at Build-A-Bear. We have a Build-A-Bear in our, our local mall. And the whole family went and had a bunch of bears built. I had to get the Bowser. It looked so cool.
I think they also had like Mario and Luigi. Okay, so it shows I have a key, but it doesn't show how many. It's actually interesting. There's that little zoomed in display in the bottom left. It kind of tells you what's nearby, and that's kind of cool. Okay, I apparently can't carry any more keys. A lot of doors. Hey, Anton. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just saying. It's really cool how things are magnified when you get close to them. And it, it, it kind of hints at stuff that's just off the screen, too. It's, it's really cool. Go ahead and use these keys. Well, this version has a lot of character society. Yeah, you guys didn't see the uh, character select screen, but it's got at least like seven or eight characters, maybe more. I don't know why it's now letting me pick up the money again. Oh, maybe you get over encumbered. Trying to figure out what the money actually does. Like, if you hit use, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm confused. If anybody knows what's going on there, let me know. Well, I can't imagine too many of you guys out there have played this. <laughs> a lot of this is probably new for a lot of you guys. Yeah, it seems like you have to get every skull key. Yep, that's the exit. Atrocity has only played Dungeon Explorer and Sega CD. I, I love that game. Uh, is Gauntlet Legends any good? Yeah, I, I love Gauntlet Legends. This is one of my favorites, actually. We uh, finished up our Dreamcast stream of it uh, last year. I do like the color variety in this. It's pleasing. We got projectile enemies now. struggling here. I'm down to 7,000 hit points, which isn't very much. Doesn't seem like it's very much. I guess there are no, like, illusory walls or anything like that.
guess this is where I started. Oh! What the hell just happened there? Huh. That was weird. Yeah, speaking of food... Oh yeah, that helps a lot. I just got a potion. But it seems like there are different types of potions. Alright, much better. Most potion effects wear off on the next level. Scrolls are permanent or last a fixed amount. I guess those are like tutorials. That's pretty cool. Those guys do a ton of damage. You know, now that I'm playing this more and more, it, it, it definitely feels like the kind of game where you really need to take your time. Like, if you don't want to get murdered by these enemies. Ah. He just did like 600 damage. That's crazy. Absolutely insane. Get me the hell out of here. Whoa! One of those potions sped me up. Not sure which one did. Excuse me. Use all the apples. How much gold do I have? Okay, so yeah, you can actually buy these. I, I don't know if I... <laughs> I don't know what I just... I don't know if I destroyed the scrolls or if I collected them. I have no idea. Oops, I shot the food. Yeah, it does, Anson. That was typical for the old Gauntlet arcade games. Your health always ticked down. I bet you, uh, the manual tells you what all the different potion colors do. But I do not have that.
All right, everything's looking a little samey. And I've got bot duty. Give me a second, guys. For anyone that hasn't been paying attention to the saga, um, I'm basically just like raging at YouTube as we stream, as the bots keep coming in. Uh, atrocity? Uh, some of the beat em ups might have done something like that. I don't remember though. Oh, there we go. Okay. Level six. Sharks on land. Okay. <laughs> it's not something you see every day. The spiders are fast. Spiders are ridiculously fast. Okay, so you can actually destroy the boulders, that's good. Use a potion. Again, I have no idea what they do. <laughs> Just gonna use all of them. And I'm about to die. It was like I, I split my body out. I feel like those spiders are just random too. Do I have any keys? I have no keys. Okay. Please go away, spider. I'm just barely staying alive. Seven. Okay, so you can kind of break through certain certain blocks.
Hmm. I think I'm about to switch games here in a minute. This is uh, it's a cool game, but it does definitely get uh, repetitious. Especially once they started throwing in extra puzzle elements like this. I'm almost about to die, too. Very low on health. Let's see. I have no idea what that did. Oh, that scroll, I think, gave me a lot of health back. Back up to 2600. Whew. Oh, I shot the food. I think I'm done with Gauntlet 3, and it's pretty cool. But, uh... Yeah, definitely a little repetitious, that's for sure. I mean, that's kind of typical of, of Gauntlet games. Now, I'm not sure what other Lynx games do Tate mode. Let's see. Let's see if there's, like, a list. Looks like some homebrew. There's Lexus, which I think that might be a homebrew. And there's a homebrew called Microvaders, which is by Songbird Productions. Good old Songbird. Man, it looks like that's about it. It's just homebrew stuff. That's a bummer. All right. Yeah, Kevin, it was Tate. Uh, we actually just played that. Uh, funny enough, we 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 did right in. We did Clax and then Gauntlet Three. Hey, Andy, welcome back. All right, so let's uh, move my uh, links back to horizontal mode. And we're going to load a different game. All right, uh, this is one I want to try. I don't remember being too impressed by it in terms of how it plays, but we're going to give it a go real quick anyway. And uh, this is the Lynx version of Double Dragon. Cats are just passed out. Yeah, I remember this not controlling very well, but we'll see. Yep, this is another Telegames release, Leo. Uh, Andy, I did. We got to the final boss. Let's leave it on easy, because I remember this being brutal. 
<laughs> we'll see what happens. Got very arcade accurate sprites, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Mike says his dog has passed out too. Okay, so I got kick and punch. Question is, how do I jump? Wow, up and attack. Really? Interesting. Oh my god, this is so hard on my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see if, like, there's a. Oh, okay, down. Okay, that's what I want. Or maybe not. The elbow just breaks the arcade game. I don't know, will if it will in this one. Doesn't seem like it's that great. Uh, Brian, yes, I have heard of those games, and I have played them. Not, I guess you can't throw, huh? Yeah, the controls in this are really awkward. Like, you have to press up and kick to do a jump kick. And then down and punch does the elbow. Up and punch does a regular jump. That constant screen scroll is really choppy, too. is solid though. Alright, now the question is how do I pick up weapons? <laughs> I don't know why they had to overcomplicate the controls, like I don't I don't know. A bobo, yep. Well, at least it seems like the whip is pretty good. There is a lot of screen tearing in Mario. Unfortunately, if I lock it to 60 FPS, it screws up the timing with a bunch of games, so we just have to live with it. That was the boss? There was no boss music? Interesting. It's playable. It's still not great. 
<laughs> oh, and I didn't get a health refill either. These guys are super annoying. They just sit like just out of your reach. That's not how it works in the arcade. And that's really interesting. You can actually just use the knife like up close. Mike, the 7800 Double Dragon's not very good. <laughs> it's kind of surprising there's no- there are no sound effects when you grab them. Jesus, how many hits are you gonna take? Come on, you would have been dead in the arcade game. That's just poor balancing. And I think I'm dead, yep. Jump kick feels so useless in this. I want that bat. Yeah, much better. Oh, you gotta be... Wow. So you drop the bat when you do a jump kick. That's good to know. Yeah, it feels like the having weapons is the only way to make this game tolerable. I tried swinging. It didn't work. Yeah, the graphics are impressive, but the gameplay definitely leaves a lot to be desired.
Oh, nice. He technically went into the water. And why are there two bridges? Come on, dude, you already made me do this once. Ugh. I wonder if this green abobo is the boss. He is in the arcade game, but he's not after a bridge. It's actually really interesting how faithful some parts are, and then how unfaithful other parts are. Definitely feels like corners were cut. Wow, if you do an elbow, you lose your bat. <laughs> it's cut, man. It's a little frustrating. Alright, we're dead again. Wow, no iframes on Wake Up. That's amazing. Yeah, level complete. No fanfare either. So I guess we're on the last level? I wonder if the, uh, moving blocks are still here. Okay, could you die already, dude? <laughs> eh, so far, they're not. I just realized that the Ropers are not here. There's a different enemy set that's just completely missing. Also, there's like a... the Stage 2 boss is completely gone. can be satisfying, but it's so awkward to use. You have to press down and punch to use it. Uh, and these guys sit just out of its reach. So it's hard to actually, like, have it be worthwhile. It works really well against the Obobos, though. Wonder how close we are to the end. Yeah, the controls sometimes don't feel responsive either, like when you grab their hair. Yeah, I remember reading this, reading a review about this game. I think it was like Game Pro. Uh, game Pro Magazine. I think they had a review and they, they gave it a, a poor rating. And I, I understand why. It definitely. It looks really good in stills, but it doesn't move that great, and it doesn't feel good. And it's very awkward. 
the combat just doesn't feel solid. It doesn't feel satisfying. That was one of the things that Double Dragon always excelled at, is all it always felt good. Like you really felt like the hits were connecting. Uh Steve, I did hear about the Genesis Mini too, yes. It's funny, I'd much rather fight a Bobos because they're a lot easier to hit. Like, they get close enough to me where the elbow actually works consistently. Just make every enemy in a Bobo. Why not? The game will be more fun. <laughs> Crap, you're here already? Oops! That's not good. tedious this is. I wonder if he's gonna actually use his gun. <laughs> Maybe they didn't program that part in. <laughs> he's just chilling there with his gun. Did we just 1cc the game on my first try? <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Hey, CM Retro, welcome back. And he's back with food. Shake it, baby. Wow, game over. No ending. That's it. That was it. Wow. Trying to be battle says the rat race, any pro strats? Uh, be fast. You have to be fast and accurate. <laughs> what? Well, that was... That was something, alright. Pa-pa-chuli Pa-pa-pa-pa-chuli Pa-chuli 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 play with her tail. <laughs> hey, Al. Hot jams. Thanks for the GG's, everybody. Hey, Vince. Stevo Patchy on the left is 10. Milo on the right is 3. Yeah, they are used to each other. Yep, yep. All right, what we're going to do is play one more game, and then I'm going to take a, a lunch break. So we're going to actually play what's on the stream uh, game title. And uh, this is Stun Runner.
Bye, though. Yeah, so this was an arcade game that used polygons. And it was a really cool arcade game. The translation to the Lynx is actually pretty solid. Um, but no polygons here. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool startup sound, too. So use the joypad to select level. Press A or B to begin. We're going to just go ahead and start on the lowest level, novice. Atari arcade games had a tendency of letting you skip ahead a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Hey, Hamilton, welcome back. All right, the red stars show the fastest path. Drive over stars for bonus points. Okay, so stars give me points. So it's kind of like a driving game, but not at the same time. There is a lot of shooting, there's boosting. There we go. You have completed level one. Gosham says, ah yes, I remember this on YouTube in 2012. That was a long time ago. All right, Boost Boulevard. Touch boost pads for hyper speed. Press A for lasers. Boost pad increases speed. I want to say in this game, like, outer walls actually speed you up, or like, you go faster on the outer walls. Yeah, the outside wall is faster in turns, which is kind of interesting. You would think the inside wall would be faster. Looks like I've got a shield, and that's it. Yeah, same here, Buffalo. Uh, I, I played this a lot back in the day when I had my, my first links. Yeah, we'll probably try Hydra out later, too, to show off the scaling. Blood Alley. Touch the green stars for bonus points. Beware the armored drones. So the armored drones I don't think you can destroy. Yeah, those are the armored drones. Oh, I have a shield. Yeah, unfortunately, this is also like a very memorization heavy game. So it's one of those you have to play over and over again to, you know, learn the courses. Alright, got it. Atrocity says, I've been really impressed with the graphics on these games so far. Links can do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it really can. That's one reason why I wanted to show it off. It's just got some um, pretty crazy hardware for a handheld in 1989. Looks like we have a shockwave that we can use. Oh, it actually destroys the uh, drones. That's nice. Or the armored cars. Well, I'm almost dead. <laughs> so I believe the arcade version of Stun Runners on the Midway Arcade Treasures Three. Uh, I'd like to fire that up sometime and actually put some time into it. You have completed level four. Welcome to the boost Hit as many boost pads as possible. This is the boost challenge. Good luck.
hard to get on top of the ceiling. Um, <laughs> I don't know these courses at all, so I'm missing a lot of the boost pads. Alright, just barely. We have completed level 5. Outer Drive. A universe of possibilities. Pick up Shockwave Marker for Ultimate Weapon. Four levels to challenge level 2. So we have a bunch of turns left and right. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Oh, that's pretty cool. It looks like you get awarded a shockwave after every certain amount of star pickups. At least I thought so. I thought there were going to be more like big swooping turns based on just the map, but I guess not. Get 15 stars for Shockwave. It's weird, because I did, but I didn't get a Shockwave. Good luck. Ah, the jumps. <laughs> There we go. I love the sound samples. He went, we are. Okay, we still made it. I think I just got awarded a shockwave. Yep. I'm so close to dying. It doesn't seem like you get Shockwave's mid-level. Oh, we still got it. Whew. Man. Show attack drones, use boss. Next level is challenge level two. Hey, Mike, thank you very much for that. Wow, another one bites the dust. Hey, hey, Deadly, welcome back. Woke up from a nap to see some Lynx goodness. Hell yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that, sir. All those tips go towards helping feed these beasts. Where's the other beast? He left. Yeah, I don't know where Milo is. <laughs> he left the building. But yeah, thank you very much, Mike. Oh, I see why they want me to get 70, because there's a ton of them.
Looks like I had a shockwave. Still made it. Oh, there's Milo. Hey, Milo. Good luck. Milo is on my desk right now. Yeah, those boost pads in some some cases are nice because they make you invincible. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. I'm interested to see what he's going to do. Oh, he's on my work keyboard. He's tried to get up on top of my work keyboard so many times when I'm actually working. I'm like, no, you can't. You can't do this, cat. <laughs> you can't. What are you, what are you doing, Milo? <laughs> what are you doing? Milo? He likes keyboards. It's something about keyboards. He's like, he likes standing on them. Ah. <sighs> He especially loves my mechanical keyboard. <laughs> you know you're a goofball, right? You coming back my way? He's coming back my way. Hey, buddy. What you doing? All right, you know what? I'm going to put you on your bed. Hopefully you stay there. <laughs> These cats are a handful. <sighs> All right, let's try this again. This is why the last couple streams I've had the game room door shut is because Milo and like Patrulli's fine. You guys know how she works, but Milo will just keep exploring and exploring and exploring as I'm streaming. And it's just distracting, especially when he like jumps up on my keyboard. Another one. Oh man. Whew. 21 stars for Shockwave. The Clover Leaf. Beware of lurking robots or probots. Construction areas rob you of speed. Okay. I like the jumps. They're fun.
Another one. Andy mentioned Polybius. Yeah, it's similar gameplay, actually. Polybius is super difficult. I really struggle with that one. The kill challenge. Kill as many vehicles as possible. Okay. Actually, save that. I'm surprised we're actually, like, making it this far without dying. I keep expecting to die because my my ship is just, like, all of its arms have been torn off. Nice. Still got it. Zero says they love the chunkiness of the graphics and the legs. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's because of the uh, the low resolution. But yeah, the graphics do look chunky as a result. Looks like they want me to boost. Level 17. Alright, shoot first and ask questions later. Five levels to the ultimate challenge. It's called Probot Hell.
Yeah, this is getting pretty tough. Still got it. 460,000 points. Satan Slalom. <laughs> Devilishly wicked. Four levels of the ultimate challenge. Yikes! Not good. Jeez, just barely. The death spiral. <laughs> Hang in there, stun runner. Good luck. Oh, we got it. You have completed level 20. Oh, Deadly, you haven't heard of Polybius? Oh man, it's been out for a long time now. It's also on consoles, it's on PS4 at least. Good luck. I think I might have it on Steam, I might have to try it in VR. Jeez, man. This is rough. Whew. Another one down. It's crazy that they still have sound samples for 21. These boost pads fly by so fast that I just can't, uh, I can't catch them. Yeah, just be warned, Gary. Uh, Polybius is, like, insanely difficult. You made it to the big time! It's time to prove how good you really are. Good luck. Oh, they bumped me off the boost pad. Mm. 
Ah, I missed that one. Yep, I had a feeling I was going to run out of time. Ugh. <sighs> you still got an ending. That's cool. That's nice. Oh, yeah, that was Stunrunner. Yeah, no continues, it looks like, Atrocity. That ultimate challenge we got to, I don't know if that was, like, the last level. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> oh, come here, Milo boy. All right, guys, I'm going to take uh, a lunch break. Ugh. Milo doesn't want to sit still. Alright, uh, what I'm going to do is actually load up my next game. And then we will, uh, I'm going to take a break, I'm going to make a sandwich, get some food in my stomach, and then uh, get some water. And then we'll continue. Milo! Milo! Hey, Milo! Hey, buddy, what you doing? Milo! Okay, you, you gotta stop getting on my desk. Oh my god! about to block him out. <laughs> he keeps jumping up on my desk and I have to do the same thing over and over and over again. <sighs> Alright guys, I guess I don't want to take a food break.
Alright. Sorry that took so long. I had to make a sandwich, which involved toast. I had to wait for the toast to toast. And then uh, I had to put my ingredients on and then heat it up in the microwave. And then I had a banana too. <laughs> While I was eating, Milo wanted to go into the bathroom. He loves um, slurping up the water when I have the, uh, the fountain on. Uh, so I, I basically have a stream of water going. He just goes up and just starts licking it. And he does this funniest thing where he puts his paws in the drain hole. And, like, gets his paws all wet. He's a nut- he's a nutcase. Yeah, DJ, I don't know if you knew, but I have, uh, two cats now. The other one's actually back here, right behind Patchy. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, this is Blue Lightning. Uh, probably one of the more technically impressive games on the system. Maybe not the most exciting game? Um, but it's still pretty cool. I don't think there's any in-game music, but it's got a pretty banging title screen theme. Yeah, they can, Gary. Yeah, Milo's got very quirky behavior. He's really, really funny. I took a hit. Atrocity says, one of his cats likes to take little pieces of stuff she finds and dunk them in the water dispenser. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can't even really see what I'm doing. <clears throat> my my plane is so big. Dead again. Yeah, Gary, I've had to put my bread in the uh, cupboard and anything else in a like a bag because Milo would just tear it open. I came out one day last week and my bread was torn open and it was stale because it had been out all night. I was like, you freaking cat. So I'm having to change how I do things because of him. It's funny. Not a big deal. It's just, you know, he, he, he keeps things exciting, I guess. Prepare to land, okay. Oh, automatic landing. 
Yeah, dude, he also got into his crunchy food. I had to, like, duct tape the bag. And then put that up in the cupboard. I've never had to do that with patchouli. <laughs> but with Milo, he just... He got into the treats. He tore open the treats bag. So I ended up tossing the treats. <laughs> And if I have, like, a fountain drink, he'll go up to it and tip it over. <laughs> he'll, he'll, like, grab it and then push it, and then it just falls over. So I have to make sure I don't have, like, open drinks. The idea of Grid Runner, though, Deadly, is it's a score-based game, so you're supposed to play it again and again and again and again. But I hear you. <clears throat> I'd like to actually try that out sometime. Oh, he's definitely an adventurer. He tries to get on top of everything he can. He tries to get into everything he can. He even, like, gets in the bathtub and starts licking the water. Patchouli doesn't do that. She's never done anything like that. They have very different personalities in that regard. Patchouli will... She used to get on top of the pinball machines. Uh, a couple times she got onto my refrigerator, but that's about it. It's a pretty cool game. Blue Lightning, again, for anyone that didn't see the title screen. Uh, there was later a Jaguar CD version of this game. It's actually, playing this on the links. it's actually interesting how similar they are to each other. Unfortunately, the Jag CD one's not really much of a technical showpiece. But it was a free pack-in with the Jaguar CD. Ground turrets are really hard to hit.
doesn't seem like there's a way to speed up or slow down. I'm completely out of missiles. Oh, it doesn't look like he can slam into the ground either. That's good to know. Mission completed. Yeah, Gary is definitely impressive for the time of its release. Oh. Hey, Internet Junkie, welcome back. Engage and disable enemy convoys. Are the convoys on the ground or in the sky? I can't really tell. Huh, that's weird. The turrets are the convoys. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but okay. Yeah, right, G Gary? Uh, Yamaha sound chip, that would have been awesome. <laughs>
runs out of missiles. Oh, that's game over. Oh, it looks like you have passwords. That's actually pretty cool. That's great. So you basically have unlimited continues with the password system. That's pretty cool. Hey, Tom. Welcome back. That was Blue Lightning. So we'll play another one by Epics. Let's call it a Electro Cop. Kind of a confusing game. Uh, levels are very maze-like, but it's one of those ones that uses the link scaling. Uh, so, Tom, you missed right in for the links. Yeah, we actually played it earlier. Washington, D.C., you're a cop. <laughs> You're summoned to uh, the offices of Megacorp, um, the world's largest corporation. Your boss orders you to do whatever Megacorp wants. They tell you that an evil robot has kidnapped the president's daughter. Oh, no. It's stolen some very important government secrets and now is hiding in an old Megacorp research and development building. The robot believes it's safe because it thinks it's the only one that has the network plugs for the building. Megacorp knows better. Megacorp knows that you have a set of plugs, too. Oh God, this story is so dumb. Why you? Because you're Electrocop, the best there is. Your robotics buddy is a powerful, fine-tuned machine. Your analog computer brain... Analog computer? That doesn't go... That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> your network plugs allow you to access any computer in the world. Though the other robot has probably scrambled the combinations your programs can unscramble. Oh my god, this is like some crazy word salad. Alright. Hey, Saboteur. Alright, so yeah, this is Electrocop. Looks like I can jump. Huh, interesting. Yeah, when I had this back in the day, I never made it very far. Because like I said, it gets confusing. But visually, it's obviously pretty impressive. Yeah, elevators. Let's see. Access the terminal. Got some funky music. I like it. Sunday visit from the family. Love when they show up with no warning. <laughs> Savitar says Blue Lightning was my favorite Lynx game back in the day. Unfortunately, my Lynx screen has died. Oh man, that sucks. Hey, we have mini games. <laughs> Whoa there. Outbreak. <laughs> Instead of break out, it's outbreak. <laughs>
Yeah, it's Avatar. It's great graphics, but yeah, I'm the same way. I never made it very far. I don't do well with big, like, wide-open games that can be confusing. I mean, especially of this type, where everything kind of, like, looks the same. <laughs> this is you win. Big deal. <laughs> Alright, Icebreaker. Stasis. Information. Robots, weapons, utilities, icebreaker. User installed skeleton key program. Stasis. User installed temporary robot disable program. Okay. Uh, med pack. Not damage. Okay. Uh, open door. Uh. I guess I have to find the, uh, the code. Okay. Nah! <laughs> I've got a shoulder cannon. Wow. A little overkill, maybe? Holy crap. My gun is destroyed. Uh, that's not good. I've got nothing. Oops. I ducked, apparently. I don't know why I'm ducking. I'm trying to figure out how to duck. Oh, you just tap the jump button and you duck. Interesting. Mysterious blue powder found in old Megacorp research facility. <laughs> Savitar says he also thought Slime World was cool, but almost too huge. Well, that was Electrogop. And it, apparently I can't skip past this? Strange. It's just kind of sitting here. Try. I'm trying to think of other games I used to play a lot back in the day. Looks like the Lynx's library is actually closer to something like 50, 50 ish games, maybe less.
Gotcha says 76 games officially. Okay, interesting. Uh, Atrocity, it's actually a little bit bigger than the Jaguar library. I think the Jaguar library, if you just count the Atari releases, uh, the Atari and Tele games releases, I think it's about like 55 or 60 or something. Uh, so th that makes the Lynx library a little bit larger. Now the Jaguar has a lot more if you count all the homebrews and stuff like that, which is, there's, there's a lot. <clears throat> Alright, so this is uh, Toki, another arcade conversion. Lynx has a ton of arcade conversions. It's kind of crazy, actually. Let's see how this is. This is uh, quite quiet, actually. I'll turn it up a little bit. Let me know if it's too loud. I think it's probably fine. I've always heard good things about this version of Toki. Oh shit, I died already. I really like, um... Yeah, I played a lot of the, the NES version. Which is actually a really easy game. Toki on NES is like super easy. Okay, that projectile is catching me off guard every time. Um... Ooh, I flipped it upside down. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, you can also soft reset on the links, which I never mentioned. Let's try it again. Yeah, that projectile kept catching me off guard. I like the sound samples. The Lynx does some really good sound sampling. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay. Alright, so I got the football helmet. That's like a shield. Uh, I thought it was like a shield. What the hell? <laughs> that thing killed me instantly. Yes, I've never actually played the arcade Toki. So, th this is definitely closer to the arcade game than something like the NES version. I mean, it's to my understanding, it's closer to the arcade game. Oh, Dude, so many enemies just catch you off guard. Definitely a trial and error kind of game. Yeah, you can hop on enemies, kind of like in Rygar. Yeah, your attack is actually, uh, temporary. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to those enemies. Gary says the Amiga port is good too. Oh, if you sit there for too long, uh... Let's, uh, let's start over. I'm not gonna waste to continue. Hey, thanks for that, Gary. Basically, what's happening, for those of you guys that don't know, I tweeted out to YouTube, multiple YouTube accounts, So feel free to like retweet that. I'm basically taking snapshots of everyone that comes in on this stream and posting them uh, one by one on that Twitter link. We've actually had less bots tonight than we have recently, but still we've we've had a lot. We've had like seven or eight already. Okay, so I'm trying this again.
So Charlie says, all these cool games make me wish I had a Lynx back in the day, right? It's a really cool system. I definitely wish I had one when it was current. Like, I loved my Game Gear. I would have absolutely loved the Lynx as well. see that ghost. Okay, seriously, dude. <laughs> Man, we're gonna have to restart again. <laughs> Alright, just kill me. We'll just start it again. This is terrible. I mean, the game's good, but I'm terrible at it, so... Well, Savitzor, so, you know, I, I, I talked about this on my Game Gear stream, but the reason is that platforms like the Game Gear and the Lynx, they were just not good handheld portable devices. You know, they sucked batteries dry, and, you know, if you wanted to get any sort of, like, you know, last ability out in the public, uh, you pretty much had to have, like, you know, a portable battery pack with it which was bulky, and it's just, they weren't really good experiences in that regard. Game Boy was like, great! It would fit in your pocket, it, you know, the batteries lasted a long time. Um, it was the exact opposite with Game Gear and Lynx. Game Gear and Lynx were better used, uh, at home, you know, next to an outlet, with, uh, with a power supply or AC adapter. And that's, that's a huge reason why the Game Boy succeeded, I think, over Lynx and, and Game Gear. Portability was, was king. I mean, that was kind of the point. And also, you had Nintendo properties as well, which, you know, Nintendo was on the top of the world at the time. Alright, there we go. We finally got it. Oh, come on! Ah, oh, this game, dude. Total memorizer. But I mean, technically, I mean, the Game Gear was definitely more impressive than the Game Boy. And the Lynx just, like, stomped over both of them. Um, technically speaking. But yeah, with portable systems, I mean, the, uh... With the portable systems, portability is, is huge. You know, it's king. If you don't have that, it's kind of... It's not good. <laughs> Alright, I'm trying this again. Oh, I... Why did I do that? This is a really embarrassing showing. Alright, you know what? Screw this game. <laughs> There's no point. I've done this level like three times now. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I totally hear that, Savitor. It's just, I was basically explaining why, like, the Game Boy just kind of ran away with that market. You know, it took control over that market. It was the most successful of the of the bunch back then. Um, it doesn't hurt that the Game Boy itself was like a third of the size of something like the Lynx or even the Game Gear. <laughs> the Lynx was a, such a beast. It was huge. It was gigantic. I think this is another Telegames release. Yeah, it is. I'm not sure if it's any good. I've never actually played this version before. Hey, David. Yeah, a lot of people liked California games. That was actually a, a pack-in for, um, for the Lynx for a while.
Uh, Savitor, I did play Wy Rygar, yeah. We got to the last boss. Hey, right, yeah, super off-road. We'll see how this one is. Guess I can just type in some initials. Z. Uh, Atrocity, yeah, there were rechargeable batteries back then. There were also, uh, battery packs you could buy. Like, these big, like, I don't know if they were lithium-based or whatever, but... They were these long, like, adapters you would plug into the power port on... on your handhelds. Alright, um... Uh, let's go with... some nitros. And yeah, let's see how this is. Uh, Jeffrey, yeah. Holy crap, this is choppy as hell. This is embarrassing. The NES does this game smooth, what the hell? Oh my god, this is like next to unplay- like close to unplayable. It's so choppy! Like, you can't- if you use a Nitro, you skip ahead so far, because of the frame rate. Yeah, I didn't say the Lynx was all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, every- every platform has its- its poor games. But man, this is just- this is- this is inexcusable. They shouldn't have even released this. Well, guys, that was super off-road. What a terrible conversion. Jeez. You know there's a problem when, like, the NES gets it right and the Lynx doesn't. <laughs> uh, what do you mean they ported Checkered Flag to the Lynx? Uh, uh, Checkered Flag actually originated on the Lynx. Not the, not the Jaguar. Speaking of which, we'll actually give that a go. I haven't actually played much of Checkered Flag on Lynx. <laughs> that was the best PowerPoint presentation I've seen in a while. It is Savitor. We actually just played that too. Oh, there was checkered flag on links. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, "What is he talking about?" There is checkered flag on links. <laughs> Man, I guess that's. Grizzly Flat, Skull Valley. Let's go with Skull Valley. It looks like an easy course. Yeah, Checkered Flag on Lynx is one of those games that's usually highly regarded, but I, I haven't really put much time into it at all. I like the rear view, uh, mirrors. Ugh. Oh. 
in fourth place. Third place. Oh, we both spun out. No. I wonder how much faster I can accelerate with manual transmission. Man, this is rough, and this looks like an easy course, too. Uh, I have not played Warbirds yet. I'm not sure if I will. I mean, we there's a lot of games to pick from and only so much time. Yeah, you veer out to the side of the course or, or the outside of the track so easily. Oh, come on, dude. Seriously? Well, that's pretty much it. We failed. Still got 15 points for fourth place. Okay. It's like this course is gonna be a little more complicated. Look at the flag man. Nicely animated. This track at least looks a little bit wider. Yeah, sometimes it does. a long course too. Oh, come on. Ugh. Am I going to do something special for stream number 400? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe we'll just do something different like a Q&A stream again. I haven't done one of those in a while. You're not the first person to ask, so people are wondering, I guess. <laughs> it's so weird knowing that people wonder, but I'm not. I'm just like going about my day, <laughs> business as usual. I don't really think too much about milestones on YouTube anymore. Because I've just got so many other things going on in my life. I kind of wish YouTube was, like, the only thing I did, but and then I would take milestones and stuff a little more seriously, I think. It's hard enough juggling the channel with everything else going on in my life, as is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to play Hagane and Nightmare Busters? Definitely not. <laughs> I want to play those again eventually. I might even try to fire up Nightmare Busters soon. Just on my own time.
Ugh. Alright, we'll finish out this lap and then we'll switch games because, uh, I don't know, this is cool, but it's a little, uh, the controls are a little slow and sluggish and, uh, it's way too easy to veer to the outside part of the track. The AI also seems to just race, like, flawlessly. Like, like I was slamming on my brakes there, but I was still veering out. That's just so frustrating. Uh, Jeffrey, I would love to do a Vectrex stream, but I don't have a Vectrex anymore. Uh, there is a Mr. Core for it, but it's... I don't know. You need it. If you want to get the right Vectrex experience, you have to be playing on an actual Vectrex. That vector display is. It's a huge part of the the appeal, and without it, uh, then you you lose. You just lose a lot of the experience. Yeah, I regret selling my Vectrex many years ago. Uh, one of the uh, older viewers. One of my earlier viewers actually sold me one. Uh, he lives relatively nearby. And he sold me one, and I loved it. I played the hell out of it, but... Uh, and when my brother moved out, I, I hit some hard times money-wise, so I sold off a bunch of my consoles. Alright, well that's Checkered Flag. It's interesting. Not really my cup of tea. But a lot of people like it. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Lynx fans like it, I should say. <clears throat> well, they they are better, Andy. <laughs> I mean, the Jaguar version's a piece of garbage through and through. It doesn't mean it's still it's gonna be like the greatest thing ever. Like I I just something about Link's checkered flag doesn't really do much for me. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm probably not going to do too well in this one, because I remember the physics being really, uh, really weird. Yeah, so this is, uh, Pinball Jam. It's, uh, recreations of two real-world pinball tables, Elvira and the Party Monsters and Police Force. We will, uh, we'll try police force first. Mm, okay. Okay, looks like one of my option buttons actually, uh, plunges. See, it's a little hard to see what's going on here, but there's a big ramp there in the middle. And then there's a ramp on the right as well. Let's see how hard it is co to control. Okay. Seems okay. Okay. Try to control it again. There you go. If you hit this ramp a bunch, you'll eventually get a million points. I think that's, that's going to be my goal right now. Alright, see ya Andy. Have a good night. There's top lanes. Man, it's really kind of hard to see what's going on here, but... I, I've i played the real-world table a decent bit, so I kind of know what I'm doing already, which is good. Oops. Pinball games in handheld form were usually not that great back in the day. This is actually one of the better ones. I'm gonna hit it up that that ramp in the middle. Oh. 
Uh, yes, it's Mistress of the Dark Elvira office. There are three Elvira pinball machines in the real world. This has the first one. And that's out. Ah, oh, jeez. Nice, up the ramp, just like I wanted. That's a thousand. Oh, twenty thousand. So There's ten thousand, then twenty thousand. Fifty thousand. Oh no, that's out. Oh, that was horrible. Uh, yeah, the Kirby Pinball Land was, was pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't until around then when they, like, Kirby's Pinball Land, there was uh, later on in Game Boy Color, Pokemon Pinball. Uh, you know, those were, uh, those were pretty solid. Yeah, Atrocity is definitely confusing to look at. Like, I understand trying to keep some of the graphical assets from the art, the actual pinball machine in the real world, but uh, it does make it confusing on the link screen. Yeah, digital pinball games in handheld form, ones that were based on, like, real machines or real style of gameplay, they... I feel like the physics uh, are just too complex for the, the hardware. And so you get really choppy or really janky uh, movements. The Getaway High Speed 2 on uh, Game Boys is another example. Oh my god, man. And of course, right as I said Getaway, Jeffrey mentions Getaway. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good on Game Boy, unfortunately. Really would have loved those to to get conversions to like you know SNES or Genesis or something. That would have been cool. But Game Boy, no. Game Boy, poor Game Boy can't do it justice. There is a multi ball in this. I actually kind of forget how to activate it. I don't know if it's my drop targets. There we go. It is so hard to hit that ramp. You gotta be kidding me, dude. Oh yeah, Deadly says Galactic Pinball and Virtual Boy. Yeah, that game is awesome. Very creative, very fun. Jeffrey asked, were any real-world machines converted to Genesis or SNES? Uh, no. None that I can think of. Uh, MS-DOS got a couple. Like, uh, someone did a conversion of, uh, 8-Ball Deluxe. Uh, and I think there's also a version of Royal Flush, which is an old Gottlieb EM, or Electromechanical. 
Um, but consoles did not, unfortunately. Adam says Metroid Prime Pinball and DS. Yeah, well, that's much later, Adam. That's Metroid Prime Pinball is probably like the best, you know, home only, you know, pinball game. It's it's amazing. Space get ahead. <laughs> Yeah, this one, it's actually a little bit easier to see what's going on on this table. Alright, right ramp. It looks like completing the top lanes uh, gives me end of ball bonus multipliers. Let me try to hit that right ramp again. Oh, bricked it. Come on, man. No, I'm shooting way too early. Nope, still too early. Leaving That's out. Yeah, one of the things is the gap between the flippers is much bigger because the ball here is not the right dimensions. So there's even an, an even bigger gap on this than there is on the real machine. That's got to make it even harder. Uh, Jeffrey, yeah, I have that collection. You mention any digital pinball game, I've probably played it. <laughs> or own it. Yeah, I, you know, when I first got into pinball, I started to get really obsessed with, you know, all the digital recreations and stuff like that. Have I played Chips Challenge on the Lynx? I have not messed around with Chips Challenge. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Shoot for the skull. So shoot for the skull, but I don't know where the skull is. I can't- I don't see a skull. I don't know if it's like left ramp or what. Oh, the skull is the far left. Okay, I see. Can I post pass? Sort of. Nice. Uh, it's so hard to hit your shots in this stupid game. Why? It's like, did anybody playtest this? Why is it so hard to hit things? And it didn't even go in. Ugh. There's nothing, like, as dissatisfying as, like, constantly breaking shots in pinball. And in this, it's like you can't even see where you're shooting, because half the screen isn't in display. Ugh.
I have played Ships Challenge, yes. I would recommend lowering the uh, video quality if uh, if your stream's buffering. I assume no one else is getting buffering right now. I'm not dropping any frames. Actually, I think my answer was no, I've never played Chips Challenge, but I know I have. It's just been a long time. I haven't played it tonight, though. Holy hell, well that was Pinball Jam. <laughs> that was something, all right. Like I said, the Lynx isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Oh, man. I don't know if this is going to be any good. I've never actually played this version, but I do want to try it. Man, some of these music choices is questionable. Alright. Huh, so it looks like you're constantly shooting. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You have to... Oh, that's an interesting control scheme. Okay, so you literally rotate around with the A and B buttons. That's it. If you never played Robotron, you need to try to kill things as fast as possible. You also need to save the humans. That's how you get big points in this game. You get tons of extra lives. Holy crap, these guys are getting fast. Oh, this is interesting. I don't understand why, like, you have to rotate around so slow, though, like... Oh, I guess I can mash the buttons. Okay, I see. Hmm. I ran into one of the 2084 signs. That's not good. Whew. It's interesting. Yeah, the controls definitely take some getting used to, that's for sure. <laughs> so Arthur says it's hard to figure out what's human and what's not. Well, I mean, that requires you to, to play the game. Basically, there's a family. There's a husband, a wife, and and then the child. The child is the, the little red guy. The husband is the guy, the blue guy with the suitcase. And then the wife is the, the woman in pink. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is an enemy. 
Everything else is instant death. But picking up the humans is very important because that's how you get extra lives. That was a good level. See another extra life. Right, there we go. Another one. These tank levels can be brutal. Ah, I didn't even see that guy. I ran right into him. Uh, yes, there is a Robotron on the 64. It's called Robotron 64. It's, uh, it's pretty decent, actually. It's It was one of those, like, retro revivals from the 90s. Uh, it's also on PlayStation as Robotron X. It's not as good on PlayStation. Your DN64 version's better. Uh, bot duty again, guys. Gotta go back to Twitter. And again, for anybody that's wondering, <laughs> I'm basically keeping track of the all the bot posts. Uh. All right. Let's continue. Milo, now's not a good time, Milo. Milo's on my desk. Alright, it's got an extra life. So this is interesting, the, uh, the border hasn't disappeared yet. That's actually something that happens in the arcade Robotron. The border disappears and the gameplay field maxes out the whole screen. Got it. Are there any more humans? Nope, doesn't look like it. <sighs> yeah, YouTube did reply. Um, it might be a canned response, I'm not sure. They, uh, you know, basically telling me to report it. I'm just like, dude, you guys already know there's a problem. Just fix it. I'm not reporting it, you know? Like, they want me to go to, like, an actual Google form and waste my time reporting something they already know is a problem. It's very frustrating. The border did disappear. Interesting. It took a lot longer for it to happen. Whew. 
barely scraping by. Yeah, I'm still trying to get used to the controls. Ugh, come on, dude. This isn't that hard. Barely making it. Oh, she's dead. And it looks like this is gonna be me being dead too. Wow, we survived it. too many of those guys. Yeah, Jeffrey, I mean, they are brutal in the arcade. I mean, everything is. <laughs> the arcade version is a really, really difficult game. Whew, surprised we're surviving as long as we have. Interesting sound effects for the tanks in this one. Take another snapshot because of the bots. Alright, back to it. <laughs> There's so much going on, it's crazy. Whoops, ran right into a sign. Ugh. I ran into the sign again. Whew. 
Just barely. <laughs> That's a good question, Jeffrey. <laughs> I don't know. If a computer if a computer becomes sentient, will it still service ads? <laughs> I have no idea how I survived that. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a pretty good version of the game. Once you get used to the controls. Oh my god, come on. <laughs> now that I'm dying, I'm gonna say this is a really bad version of the game. That's game. We didn't break a million points. So that was pretty good. What music is here though is terrible. Not gonna lie, I don't know why they chose these tunes. Yeah, David, they did do a decent job with the sound effects. The Lynx, it, you know, its music capabilities aren't the greatest, but it's got some great sound sampling capabilities, which is really cool. Hey, there's the Milo boy. Thanks, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. So, uh, this is Road Blasters. Apparently, the Lynx version is pretty good. Uh, I've played the NES and the Genesis version. I don't think I've messed around much with the Lynx version. At least not recently. I've probably had it about 20 years ago or longer. Alright, let's start off on Rookie. The idea is to get to the end of the course, you have to blow stuff up along the way. Whoops! Not like that. I think this game's kind of quiet, I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, looks like the green things are... <laughs> fuel pickups. Yeah, it runs nice and smooth. I'm gonna guess I have, like, infinite lives. It's just a matter of whether I... make it to the exit or not, or the end. Jeez. Yeah, it looks like there's the second bar in the right is fuel. And if I run out of fuel, I think it's game over. Remember uh, other versions getting really, really difficult. 
Yeah, yeah, deadly. The Genesis version is solid, absolutely. I like the transitions, it's pretty cool. Sorry guys, I just have to keep posting these stupid screenshots to Twitter. Try to, you know, drive home the point. Thanks for uh thanks for modding that, Gary. I appreciate that. Reserve fuel awarded based on score. Okay. Man, it is so hard to hit these cars though, I will say that. It's like, it's very difficult. Holy crap, I just used some kind of turbo boost. Yeah, I'd say that's my big complaint with this so far, is it's really hard to hit these cars. Super hard. I don't remember having that problem in the Genesis version. Yeah, I'm about to run out of fuel. Oh! I guess we can continue. Let's continue once. I mean, maybe I'm just better off taking my time. I don't think you're supposed to hit those armored cars. I must feel like they're civilians or something. Or maybe they're just armored and that's it. Whew. Yeah, the game gets tough. Yeah, it seems like slowing down is the way to go. Oh. Yeah, it looks like when I die, I, I lose my, uh... I lose my weapon. All about that fuel. If you don't get that fuel, then you're you're gonna run out.
I'm honestly kind of surprised at how smooth this game runs. Ooh, just barely. Hey, Crestline, welcome back. James, don't be dumb. Don't spam that garbage here. And how are you doing? It's been a long time. Last thing we need, along with sex bots, is conspiracy theory BS. Well, let's not go there. Of course, mines everywhere. I don't have any fuel. Oh, there's some. Jeez, just barely. I will say the voice samples aren't that good in this game. I have I actually have a really hard time understanding what the lady's saying. Out of fuel. Oh man. Well, that's road blasters. <sighs> the game's all sad that I'm leaving. I'm leaving this game behind. Hey, Milo's back. <laughs> Road thoroughly blasted. That's right, office. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Let's actually, uh, let's actually try Warbirds because I don't think I've ever actually messed around with that. But we'll give it a go. See what it's like. Like I said, some of these games I haven't really messed around with before. Hey, Patchouli. Are you finally awake? All 
great. Let's try this. Unlimited... Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Interesting terrain. I wonder if those are actual polygons. I guess I got him. <laughs> I'm a rookie. Looks like this game would get repetitive pretty quickly. It seems like it's just dog fighting and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Although I guess technically I should... It's like it's making me... It has me invincible, basically. <laughs> So I have to disable those options to for for like an actual challenge. Interesting, you've got different viewpoints. Wow. I mean, te technically, it's really impressive. Gameplay-wise, it's like, eh. I'm a little biased, though, because flight games aren't really, like, my cup of tea, generally speaking. I'm basically just looping around in circles. Right, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. I think that's it. Okay. Oh, hmm, okay. 
Dueling start, random start. Double teamed. All right, take care, Atrocity. Oh! <laughs> yeah, this will be a little more difficult. And I did it again. Crash right into him. Getting in that Top Gun mood. Yeah, basically. I saw the new Top Gun last week. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't tell me how many rounds I have left. Oh, that's game over. <laughs> Rank target. Oh, it looks like it continued. All right, well, that's Warbirds. We're just kind of like tearing through these games. So we will give this a try. It's one I haven't actually uh, played much of. is Scrapyard Dog. This is also on the Atari 7800. This was a pretty well-known Lynx game back in the day. I can already tell this is a lot cooler than the uh, 7800 version. <clears throat> Mr. Big. All right. Yeah, it looks like we can get money. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, it's a platformer. I know in the 7800 version you can like go into sewers and stuff like that and play mini games. Oh, looks like I can <laughs> I could buy guns. All right. <laughs> yes. Ten shots. Okay, how do I exit? Oh, just hit no. All right, right on, Tom. Thanks for uh, stopping in. Can I go in here? Yep, I can go in there. All right. 
I don't think I ever figured out what to do here in the 7800 version. Janky. Hey. Interesting. That's kind of cool. Go into the washing machine. <laughs> There's a guy in here. <laughs> oh, not enough cash. I need more cash. I actually kind of prefer my projectile. It looks like that's level one. Piece of cake. Go to the vehicle section. Okay. Okay, why can I not get that? Oh, there we go. You have to hold down the jump button a long time. Time. 30 seconds. Uh, no thanks. I think I'm good. Oh, Yeah, and it's one hit kills. Go figure. Three lives left. Yeah, it looks like he sells you the same thing every time. Uh, or I should say, like... These salesmen are not random, like... They sell you specific things in specific spots. Hmm... How am I supposed to avoid that? I'm invincible, okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, I thought I could maybe duck. I don't know what he's throwing, Arthur. I'm not sure. Man, I think it's game over. No last life. Might be like a can or something, I don't know.
Think you're pretty tough, huh? Try to get through the appliance area. Okay. Wow, the uh, controller responsiveness definitely could use some work. I, like, I was mashing the jump button and nothing was happening. I had a feeling the cat would hurt me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I wonder if I get continues. <laughs> wow, no continues. Well, that's scrap your dog. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that one. It seems okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems okay. Lynx doesn't actually have a ton of platformers. Uh, there, there's a, there's a few like, uh, Todd's Adventures in Slime World, uh, Switchblade 2. Remember if Switch A Blade 2 actually had music in game. Let's find out. Yeah, it's super quiet. I, I remember this. It's always one of those things that kind of bugged me. I was like, this game looks really cool. Uh Funny thing is, this might be one of those games where there's there's not actually a part one. I have to I'll have to look into it sometime. But yeah, this was apparently by Gremlin. They did a lot of stuff back in the day. Usually their games were technically sound. Not always the most fun to play though. Uh It right, looks like I have a gun now. It's actually interesting. It looks like uh, when you get up close, even if you have a gun, uh, you'll still... Uh, oh, you can jump up high. Up and jump allows you to do like a super jump. Well, that's good to know. Uh, you'll still swipe with your sword, which is cool. It just does it automatically. Uh, Gremlin Graphics, Jeffrey says, did Top Gear? Uh, I don't know about that. They might have done, like, the original Lotus games. I don't know if they, well, I'll have to look into it. Top Gear was related to the Lotus games. Leo says Gremlin did Lotus and Top Gear. Okay, cool. Thanks for clarifying, Leo. I appreciate it. Arthur says it reminds him of a lot of those generic MS-DOS games. Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't seem bad, but it's definitely the kind of game you want to play, like, with some music in the background. Shame your gun is so weak. I mean, I do like the, the perspective, the slightly isometric viewpoint.
looks like I'm out of ammo. Welcome, hero. What would you like? Oh, this is like a shop. Uh, can I can I buy uh, some music, please? Spin blades, huh? A dragon. Extra life. Beam laser. Let's try it. Yeah, that would actually be kind of funny. And I don't know if anyone's ever really done this, but... Start the game with no music, and then you just... You you buy, like, a Walkman at the first shop, and you, you can buy, like, a tape. <laughs> and that's how you get your music. That would actually be an interesting mechanic, as long as you didn't have to go too long without music. Gary says this was also on the Amiga. Gotcha. I had a feeling it was on the Amiga. I think they're... Uh, what the hell? Is there, like, fall damage? What did I get hit by? I definitely did not get hit by that fire. Let's see. Yeah, dude, there's fall damage. What the hell? I did not expect that. Yeah, so Gary, I'm pretty sure this also got an Atari ST version. Uh, because I believe uh, Reboot did a port of it to the Jaguar. I have 19 credits. Jeez, information feels like a ripoff. 10 credits? Oh, great. Random spikes. Really? Really? Now I'm gonna have to inch my way across <laughs> the game. That's not cool. Typical Euro design. Yeah, the problem with the spikes popping out of the ground is like there's no indicator showing that there will be spikes. I wonder why they went with no music on this game. It's just such an odd choice for a platformer. Kind of cool. We can go in and out now. Ah. Actually reminds me a tiny bit of Crash at Demon Head for the NES. Holy crap. <laughs> These hitboxes are not... 
Really? <laughs> I'm having the worst time tonight. Holy hell. This is definitely a gameplay and fail stream, that's for sure. <sighs> Why couldn't she have put music in game? What was the limitation? There probably wasn't one. So Leo, I don't know if you were here earlier when I played Super Off-Road, but it was terrible. It, it was it was really bad. Oh yeah, Jeffrey. Turn cam would have worked pretty well in here. Yeah, Leo, I was actually shocked at how bad it was. I was like, this is inexcusable. <laughs> Super Off-Road is such a simple game. So this is a uh, Hydra. And... Yeah, and Hydra was an arcade game. I had to double check. Actually, it looks really cool in the arcade. I did play Road Blasters, Leo. That was actually a couple of games ago. Bot duty there. Easy, medium, hard. We'll go with easy. It's interesting. You have to hold down to go. That's weird. Okay, it looks like those we just pick up. We pick up those two. Oh wow, you can fly a little bit. Interesting. Out of fuel. Uh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, that was weird. I said I was out of fuel, but then I'm not? I, I'm so confused. I guess fuel is on the right-hand side. Why do you run out of fuel so fast in this? This is, uh, this is weird. Okay, I guess we'll try again. Why did that not hit? I 
guess the package isn't gonna pass me. Uh. Alright, checkpoint. Yeah, I got all my fuel back, I see. It's so interesting you can fly for a bit. Oh. Leo, I don't remember, does the Lynx have the TIA from the 2600? like a bonus game. Yeah, that was a bonus game. It doesn't have the TIA. Okay. Well, its chip definitely has some similar sounding sound effects, that's for sure. Ziggy's Weapon Shop. Crown Jewels. I mean, the game definitely seems pretty cool. I like, ah, uh, I'm gonna say I like it. though. Man. Unlike Road Blasters, it looks like you actually get lives. Oh no, that's not true. You get lives, but as long as you still have fuel, you're still alive. Yeah, scenery transitions are cool too. It reminds me of Outrun in that way. We got it. So I guess the idea is to take your item to the end. Yeah, you're gonna get to the end, have your item, and then you get a bonus cash out, and you play a bonus game.
Yeah, it looks like I'm actually flying here. Fifteen thousand in bonus. Okay. Anti grav. <laughs> Nuclear device. Uh, what the hell hit me? Ugh. Yeah, every time you, you blow up, your, uh, whatever you're smuggling gets thrown out and someone else can pick it up. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of this. Took me a little while. So I guess you can't kill those things, huh? No, you can. Just barely made it. Lego Dimensions got classic games? Uh, tell me more about this, guys. I know nothing about this. Why is a Lego game getting retro arcade ports? Ah. I like that six-way shot. It was actually pretty useful. So I guess we did the easy course. Now I do medium. Lego Dimensions received a Midway Arcade level pack a few years ago with 25 or so classic arcade games. What? That's insane. I didn't even know about that. These are stuff like Tapper and Defender with Blastroids was the sole newcomer. Okay. Why you own Lego Dimensions on Wii U and Xbox One? Wait, there's a Wii U version of it? Let's see, now I'm gonna have to find that, Leo. Is that digital only, or is that a physical? There is a physical. Okay, I've probably seen it before, and just... 
I really thought much to try it. Yeah, I gotta have that if it's Midway games on my Wii U. Dude, it is so easy to die. I keep missing my object. I keep missing it. Yeah, missed it again. You have to play the main game to unlock them. Ah. Got it. <laughs> okay. Leo says it's like Skylanders and Nintendo's own Amiibos. Oh, Lego Dimensions has figures you can buy? Where? You'll need the Mid Midway Arcade Level Pack 2 for the Lego figures to place in the Lego portal to plug in the... What? Okay, never mind. Maybe I'll pass on it. <laughs> I didn't think it had all that nonsense with it. I thought it was just a uh, standard game. Oh, that's Lego Dimensions. Okay. Oh, never mind, Leo. I'll pass. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I really want that. What a weird way to, uh... shoehorn in Midway Arcade games. Dude, there's all sorts of tie-ins. There's Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Portal, Wizard of Oz, Midway Arcade, Lego Movie. Oh, that makes sense, because it's a Warner Brothers published uh, product. That's why Midway's attached. Okay. Yeah, that sounds tedious. I, I was under the impression it was more like Lego Movie the game or something. Um, I heard that's actually pretty good. Check this out, Leo. T 
$2.99 for Lego Movie the Game. Oops, sorry, wrong link. I'm trying to share the link, but Amazon makes it so hard to do that. All right, never mind. Yeah, some seller on Amazon has Lego Movie the Game for Wii U uh, for $2.99. Let's actually switch games. This was, uh, it was pretty cool. I'm glad I actually put some time into it. I understand it a little bit better now. It's definitely got some cool concepts. Uh, I definitely would, I definitely want to try the arcade version now. This might be our last game. We've been streaming for, uh, over six hours now. Uh, it's midnight. I think what I want to do is try to uh, get on my bike, do a late night ride, and then get some dinner on the way back around. But this is, uh... Gates of Zendokan, another epics game. It's a uh, shoot 'em up We'll see how it is. I don't think I've really messed around with this one much. Let's start with easy. Yeah, office time flies, man. Uh, Deadly? Yes, that was actually my first game I played. It seems okay. The choppy frame rate's a little disappointing, though. Yeah, Gary, I'm gonna try to have it up uh, sometime early tomorrow. Time codes to every game we played. Enter here. Okay. What if I don't? Land here for repairs if you dare. I don't think I really need repairs, but okay. Interesting.
Hello there. All right, so you've got this like weird inertia system. You speed up. If you constantly uh, move. Interesting. Nice, Gary. Gary says this was one of the first games he played when this core came available. Became available. That's cool. I like about these Blinks games is that they are pretty unique. They might not be amazing. Like, this game's frame rate, I think, really kills a lot of the enjoyment. But, I mean, there are some interesting enemy types and patterns and whatnot. Some interesting concepts. You know, it's different. Yeah, the level design is very weird. I agree. You basically go through these warps, and then you're just put into, like, a small vignette of, like, one concept. So this concept is just these big blocks, and that's it. And you go through another teleporter, or gates. And then it, uh, you know, same concept. You go through another vignette of a, of a single concept. Uh, what? <laughs> I got too close, apparently.
Oh, you do have a shield. Interesting. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, there it is. It's gonna still follow me. Yeah, like the idea of docking up, switching ships because you're taking some damage, it's it's interesting. I ultimately don't know what the goal is. Like, I know I can skip some gates. I don't know if it's good or bad. Office is the goal is to have fun. 
I am having so much fun off this. This game is so much fun. Uh, so Arthur says there's a final boss, but there's different uh, gates and routes you can go through. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Yay! Fun! I mean, the game's okay, it's just, uh... The frame rate's what's really getting to me. It's super choppy, and I just- I can't play shmups that are like this. You guys know I love my- my shmups, but... I can't play super choppy ones like this. Soundtrack's nothing to write home about either. It's no cyber cop, or electro cop. Uh, I hope tonight's stream has been at least interesting for some of you guys. I know some of you haven't seen much of the links. But now you have a good idea of what the platform is like. And there's still a lot of other games we haven't tried yet. My fault. I don't know how close we are to the end. I don't know if this is a big game or a small game. <sighs> I should say long game or short game. Likewise, Gary, it's always great having you, sir.
Took another hit. Hey, JD. Welcome back. We're gonna be heading out here in a couple of minutes. I think I'm done. This game's putting me to sleep. <laughs> Say goodbye to the kitties. the uh, soft reset is for this. Oh, there we go. I think I fixed it. Oh, boy. Yeah, no problem, Jeffrey. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. I appreciate it. But, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm tired. I need to get some food. I also need to get some exercise in. I've been a fat, lazy ass recently and it's nice out right now and it's quiet so I'm gonna go out and do a quick bike ride and grab some food um, people like Gary I might pop in on Twitch afterwards um, I feel like I want to try to do some more PS2 stuff try some more Dynasty Warriors too uh, so yeah Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. I'll have this up and time-coded tomorrow. Uh, if you guys miss my uh, more recent quick plays, I actually made a playlist of those, so feel free to check that out. I'll uh, link it in chat. I just posted uh, Super Mario Brothers on Friday, so feel free to check that out as well. But yeah. Uh, some frustrating moments in the stream with the bots and some of the games we played, but you know, some other really good stuff we played too. So the Lynx is just a really cool console. Uh, definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. And maybe we'll come back sometime in the near future with another stream focusing on games that we did not play in this one. So, yeah, we'll see you about that. But thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll catch you later. Take it easy.